This podcast is sponsored by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash media hole for your free 30-day trial, including one free audiobook. There's over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. And uh, you can listen to them on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or any other MP3 player. Yep. Hi, welcome to Media Whole Podcast. Nathan uh, doesn't fucking have portrait orientation lock on his phone. I saw it go wide for a second there. What are you, a psychopath? Well, why would I lock it? I because sometimes they're, they're, turn it sideways. You ever fucking be in... Do you ever, do you ever lock it? No, I don't need to. I have I a phone look, that knows good. Like, I, it no, never really wait, you, screws, you, over, just screws me over me. What'd you just say to me? Like, my phone knows when not to do it. So you're saying my phone doesn't know when to, not to do it? You're saying an iPhone might not have the features of an Android? <laughs> until five years later? Like, widgets? <laughs> Widgets are dumb. I didn't like them when I had them on Android. No, I just always leave it on because when I lie down in bed, it always goes sideways. I use my laptop when I'm in bed. Mm, I don't have one. <laughs> How the fuck do you use a laptop in bed? Are you like this? What? Yeah, I... I'm I, like fully lying down, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm fully lying down. I just put my laptop in front of where my face is. And then you like use it sideways. Yeah. Cool. I don't like your way of doing things. AudibleTrial.com slash Media Hole. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Media Hole Podcast. Now, if you don't know, this is a weekly podcast in which me and Ian talk... Me, I'm Nathan, and my friend Ian, who's a, the other voice, uh, talk about... The indignant one. <laughs> talk about news and movies and television shows and all sorts of d- shit, old video games and stuff. It's cool. It's a good podcast. It's one of the only ones I listen to. Because you have to. You edit it. <laughs> I actually went back and listened to an older episode of yeah. this because I was like, okay, what do we do for the fucking top 10 and top five or whatever things of the year oh. last year? And so I listened to all three of ours. Um, all of December has got to be like a tight hour and a half episode so we can just go wild on that final episode like we did last year. Yeah. So what was that fucking, wasn't that like fucking three and a half That was the first, no, 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 that was, we were just under three. Just under three. The, our longest and episode. And that was with Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck. Anyways. So wait, what you what were, what were your findings? Uh, well, my findings were that we, we, just like the rules were like, you know, no remasters, but remakes are okay. You know, that sort of thing for like uh, games and shit. Um, but then I was like, oh, I got to write down everything I did in 2020. And I realized that are that's new. And I realized I've only seen total five new movies in 2020. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of hard to see movies now. Yep. Which made me sad because I'm like, I can't even make a top five. I watched five. <laughs> Well, you can rate or you can rank them in the the top five movies I watched this year. Also, the only five movies I watched this year, and here's the order. Yeah, but Ian, that means that Weathering with You has to be on the list. Uh, and it doesn't deserve to be on the list with the other four movies that I've seen this year. Uh, whatever. What? I think it's a fine movie. It's just okay. Mm. Yeah, a fine movie. Yeah, but it then it doesn't deserve to be in a top five. It deserves it more than the fucking movie. <laughs> I think I'm inventing things or whatever the fuck. Did you watch it? No, I, of course I didn't. All you right, spoiled then, it for me. Why would I watch it? Because you were like, that actually sounds sp- cool. I told you not to spoil it for you me. You literally did not. <laughs> I swear, go back and listen. I said, we're going to spoil it. Do you think you're going to watch it? Because you can leave the room and I can do my whole thing. Yeah. And you're like, no, yeah, this sounds cool. I want to know what happened. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I'll tell you. And I then you were like, now I want to watch the movie. Huh? I don't like everything that leads up to it, though. Which is what? A series of awkward, stilted conversations that are weird and creepy yeah, and awesome? Yeah, because I have one of those for two hours every week. I don't want to have to d- deal with it for two hours in the middle of the week when I watch a movie. So anyways, them jets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right into the news. All right, guys. First up. Uh, here's some interesting news from earlier this week, you guys. This is real news, not 
uh, movie I, stuff. I don't think it's real news. This is actual news. I, I feel like you're going to go somewhere and say, you're going to say some dumb shit. No, I was going to say Facebook finally took a stance on something. Oh, yeah. It's now against the rules to deny the Holocaust on their platform. Wow. Appar- good job. <laughs> apparently, it was totally okay to do it between 2004 and September 2020, but now it's not okay. Mm. Um, but don't worry, Ian. You're still allowed to deny other genocides. Oh, like the Armenian genocide. <laughs> yeah, or Canada's re- residential schools, or Rwanda, or any of the ones that Facebook was complicit in, like Myanmar. <laughs> or whatever current genocide's going on right now. Ethiopia. <laughs> sure. The world's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Let's not let people act like it, th- it isn't. Mm-hmm. Mark Zuckerberg should be tried for crimes against humanity. If Mark... Uh... There's other people in charge as well. Mark Zuckerberg and everyone else on his level. Because there's... Like, that dude lives in fucking Hawaii and Facebook's, like, uh, but like home office or wherever the fuck is, like, not in Hawaii. There's definitely some other board of directors that is making decisions that's not Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, he has, like, a second in charge guy who's also a terrible person. Yeah, so we should charge that guy as well yeah. and all the people below them. <laughs> Well, until you get to the base level employee, anyone who is considered management in that building, get fucked. (laughs) I think there's a lot of people at Facebook who work there and go, man, my job is terrible for human rights, but also I'm somebody who cares enough to notice. And if I leave, then somebody who doesn't give a shit will have to do it. And also, I'm probably making upwards of $80,000 a year. Yeah. So, yeah, let's stick around. (laughs) Like there was that poor woman. Uh, never mind. It, listen uh, to the Behind the Bastards episode on Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, sure. Is that uh, we were going to talk about the woman, like the people who have to like go through Facebook's like reported stuff and see like violent imagery all the time. Yeah, and um, um, the people who have to look into like hate groups and stuff mm. and report it up to up the ladder to management who just ignore it. Mm, and then they get the reports again. But then you have to see it and report it and then see the consequences of not. Acting on it. Yeah, I think yeah, the only thing I have a problem with Facebook's fat checking thing is sometimes it's like on a meme that's and it's like clearly a joke. But then also memes is how Donald Trump won. Yep. Of people going like, "Oh, look, Hillary's a demon." Ah. <laughs> Stop eating chips. <laughs> I don't eat on this fucking show. Sorry. And you also just straight up on your mouth, right up on... That was absolutely on purpose. Yeah, edit that out. That's gross. No. Mouth no- I can hear your mouth noises from over here. Get out of here. Hey, Stevie. Stop it. Because <laughs> I hate them. Uh, in other... In movie news... <laughs> George- oh, wait. One second. Mm-hmm. Let's just do one more real life news. Okay. Uh-huh. Joe Biden. Awful human being. Yeah. Not a great dude. Mm -hmm. Better than the other one, though. Yeah. I think everyone needs to stop saying how much we hate Joe Biden right now. Please vote for Joe Biden, who sucks. But (laughs) but does not suck as much as the other guy. Yeah. Go watch the South Park episode about voting that was made in 2004. Or don't, because South Park's a bad show that encourages bad opinions. No, not always. It is. I think that's. I think early. Well, the douche versus turd situation is like you shouldn't vote for anybody because voting's dumb and caring is bad. Oh, you know, you know what? Yeah, that's how that episode ends. I forgot that's how Steve, how Stan goes about it. Yeah. Well, I think his whole thing was that instead of like caring so much about who's running the country, why don't you just try and do better for your community instead of pressuring people to vote? But it's like, um, but also, (laughs) it's easier to do things for your community when the guy up in charge. I didn't see Stan go to any fucking protests. Looks like he just wanted to complain and then not vote and be like, oh, they're not going to do anything I anyway. I always like the joke in that fucking episode, though, about Diddy walking around trying to kill Stan because he ran, like, a vote-or-die campaign in 2004. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, Biden's provo- proposed uh, tax increase will mostly, in fact, impact the very wealthy. If you make over $400,000 a year in the U.S., you deserve to be taxed more. Yeah. Yeah. Because even it, like, here's the thing. He pledged to not raise taxes on anyone making less than 400000 per year. Right. That's not going to happen, obviously, but still, like, and also, if you, if you make a little less, of, if you make, like, a, like over 200000 Yeah. I think you could get taxed more. Yeah. Not, not as, if you make over 400000 you can get taxed a lot more. 
Yeah. If you make over 200, a bit more. Yeah, 50% uh, 50 tax of any dollar you make over $400,000 a year is reasonable. I think over 200,000 is even reasonable for 50. Yeah. Wasn't it back in the day, like, if you made $95,000, like, in early, not early America, because making, like, 19... Uh, Yeah, there was a... Early yeah, 20th in the century 50s, America. In the 50s, which is why you remember everybody had everything given to them, but then they pretend that they worked for it in the yeah. 50s. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, in the 50s, corporations and like the wealthy paid over 70% tax yeah. in the U.S., uh, if you made like ninety five thousand dollars, it was like give us seventy percent. Which, of your which money, I mean, please. at the t- at the time, you could buy a house for like ten grand, so yeah. ninety thousand dollars a year is extremely wealthy. Mm-hmm. You could buy nine houses a year now. Um, uh, houses and, are like a million dollars. Yeah. So if you're making ten million dollars a year, mm-hmm. you can buy ten houses. Yeah. Imagine if you're making four hundred thousand. Yeah, you're not buying a house every year, but you could pay off a house within. Three years. If you bought a moderate house, yeah, like I don't know how much this house costs to run, but yeah. I know how much my house costs to run. Yeah, with the pool, like with the electric bill and everything, it's about like fifteen hundred dollars a month. And my actually, no, yeah. I think it's like about a thousand because my sister's rent in the basement pays for the fucking utilities of the house. Okay, so yeah, so a thousand bucks a month plus whatever your so mortgage is. A, yeah, but if you have like even without the mortgage, yeah, I'm saying before the mortgage. You have $1,000 for your utilities. And that's a house that runs hot. <laughs> like you have a ton of electricity going through it. Mm-hmm. You got a fucking pool to run during the winter, the summer and all that shit. Then you got, I don't know, your cable and the rest of the nonsense. I'm going to say that's an extra 500 Just round up. It's $1,500 a month to run that house. If your mortgage payments is another 1500 that's 3000 Someone making like 50000 a year... Mm-hmm. can cover that but will never pay off that house so someone making four hundred thousand dollars a year has an mm-hmm. extra three hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah to fucking pay off that house yeah plus, so you deserve to get taxed more. plus car plus whatever right you can have whatever you fucking want yeah so you make four hundred thousand dollars a year you could pay for a house a fucking high-end like luxury vehicle and a fucking plane i like would a say private high, plane. i would say well how high-end are you talking I'm talking like a luxury vehicle. What I'm does talking your mom drive? A, a Jag? Yeah. Well, like, yeah. which one? I don't know. I yeah, don't I don't know, know either. Jags. I don't know why I asked. Even if you gave me, like, an exact one, I'd be like, sick. Price. <laughs> I'm sure it's like, a lot. It's a Jaguar. Yeah. Uh, but, like, yeah. you know, like that. Or even a more... You could probably get a fucking Maybach, honestly. Oh, uh, even if you had, like... Oh, I don't know. Would you... Tesla's not high end, right? Tesla, the 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 normal Tesla. Because you can Teslas get like are. a Model Three for like the Model Three 60, is like the cheap one. I think you, it's sixty nine thousand. I thought it was like oh that might be the Canadian, yeah. But like the other ones are over a hundred. The the regular ones. I get. I I hate car people. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I was on TikTok and I scrolled through and it's like some guys like luxury level cars that you can get for a low amount of money and the lowest amount was 40 grand and I'm like I'd rather get a consumer grade car for 40 fucking grand if I had that much money because luxury ones it's like cool I paid $40,000 for like I don't know some weird BMW that cost that much mm-hmm. and then now I have to pay BMW rates for everything else about yeah, it I'd rather go get like a, a brand new fucking Honda Civic or something yeah or like, you know, a Mitsubishi Lancer if they made new ones. <laughs> Go to China, you can get them. <laughs> yeah, right-hand drive. Yeah. Also, import costs and not being able to drive it legally. And emissions and shit, yeah. Because yeah. frequently Chinese cars fail emission tests. Yeah, because China doesn't care. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. China doesn't give a fuck. Man, imagine making 400000 a year. I'd love it. I'd, I'd be, be so sick. happy. Yeah. I would be more than happy. I would be... Uh, I actually always thought, like, if I had... The fir- one of the first things I would do if I had a fuckload of money is I just... Four hundred. Th- hold on. $400,000 is house with a friend guest house on the property money. Depends on where you live, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you're a li- around here, probably not, but we're also in a very tight yeah. suburb. I'm saying, like, if I'm you saying if Milton, you went though, to Milton, yeah. yeah, you could get a house with well, another Milton's small up and coming, house. so you'd have to go there, like, now. Yeah. And it would probably still be on the fringes. Probably, you could probably get something Every nice and fucking... Every time I drive one of those, fu- buy one of those fucking random houses on Milton. Like, you know, up Derry, mm-hmm. going towards Milton. There's giant houses, yeah. There's no, they're not, there is giant houses, but there's also like those small houses that are like way too close to the corner. And I'm like, I understand that this used to be like a farmhouse or something, mm-hmm. but it's just like, 
if I bought that property, if that house was a piece of shit, yeah. I would. And I, if I had the money to buy that whole property, because the, the property's probably worth a lot. Yeah. Because it's around Milton. I would buy that shit, tear the house down, build a new house, but farther back so I didn't have to worry about dairy traffic. Mm-hmm. And also then I could get like a big gate with a long road. <laughs> yeah, anyways. You deserve to be taxed more. Yeah. We're thinking we're thinking with four hundred thousand dollars going like, yeah, I could do all this around me. Yeah. Obviously go into debt, but I could afford it. Yeah. So And yeah. you'd have inherently good credit. Yeah, it's impossible to have bad credit unless you buy like five Lamborghinis and it's yeah. like you couldn't afford one. Yeah. If you man, if your car costs more than your salary, you're an idiot. Yeah. You're honestly dumb. So, anyways, off to... We're done hating on the rich. Yeah. Well, we're never done. Well, we're uh, done talking about right how Right now, yeah. Uh, go to vote.org if you live in the States. Yeah. You know what also I remember hearing about? It was like, you know, when Disney Plus was coming around, people were like, yeah. just fucking pirate it. Mm-hmm. And it was because... And uh, someone was like... It was just this long essay about people being like, but what about the cameramen? How will they get paid or whatever? Like, you know, yeah. people... Who, the technical people. Mm-hmm. Not the talent and not the businessman. Their contract. Yeah. They already got paid. Yeah. Just like... Don't worry about them. Also, I think actors get paid too much sometimes. Like, did you know, like the Big Bang Theory cast? Like, the main cast made a million dollars an episode? At some point when it became the most popular show on television? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I saw this clip. I don't know who I, I, I did, there was a black woman in it. I honestly can't remember. Don't know who she is. Period. What What was it from? I don't know. Okay, it wasn't from like a TV show. Oh, was it? Was but it where Joel there McHale was Joe McHale and, and Kelly Cuoco and one other person? And she was saying it's like it's like the smartest show on television, and I'm like okay. And then she's like, and then I'm like, and she go to the stage. Yeah, she's like, like I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. I'm like, all right, it's not smart. It's yeah. nerds. It's like nerd she culture said, stuff. Yeah, she said it's like it's too nerd- nerdy for me. And yeah, shit. but I get like I guess Kaylee Kiyoko probably had fun being on the show the whole like mm-hmm. the whole time. So what what does she have to do? She just has to be hot the whole time. I mean, and be talked down to. <laughs> Kaylee Kiyoko is truly the only likable character in the entire show. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's like a human person with she's uh, a human thoughts person and feelings who just like, and emotions. For some reason, falls for this man At- who thinks Scott Pilgrim is the hero. <laughs> <laughs> you, but you know, yeah, that every uh, well, Sheldon probably didn't see that movie because he's mm. going like, I can just make formulas. But Leonard, I think the other one's name is Howard. Mm-hmm. Raj. Raj. I was about to just say the brown guy. <laughs> The guy people think is Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah. Or the the guy who people think Kumail is. Like, you know, like those Mix guys definitely other. watched Scott Pilgrim and they were like, man, Scott Pilgrim ruined a generation of women. Yeah. Why do all these women have uh, personalities and emotions and want to sleep with whoever they want without necessarily settling down? I can't believe Mary Elizabeth Winstead is such a whore. <laughs> they don't even call her Ramona Flowers. They just yeah. call the actress a whore. She chose to do this role. I mean, she, I think it's because it really, <laughs> I mean, resonates dude, with her real being. She did steal Ewan McGregor from his wife. Yeah, but who would not try and steal Ewan McGregor? You're right. Yeah. Honestly, the fact that those two are dating is like, I think that's too much sexy in one relationship. I I think Ewan McGregor is hotter than Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I no no, you're wrong. You're just wrong. I. I just, that's what I think. They're both super hot. Is, is Michael Sarah really tall? Yeah. Because Mary Elizabeth Winstead... She's tall. She feels much shorter in Scott Pilgrim, though. I don't know why. Just in my head... You know what? I'm just going to look up a picture from Scott Pilgrim. Uh, I think she's wearing regular shoes in that in a lot. Like, I think she's constantly wearing flats in that movie. Or she's just really short. But she looks like a tall person. Oh, you know what? Here. Uh, the scene at the party when he tries to use his expert flirting. They're mm-hmm. like kind of close in height. They're like the same height. I yeah. would say that's like an inch or so off. Yeah. Yeah. And he also slouches a bit. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to say there's if Scott Pilgrim, if Michael Sarah, She like seems six, very tall in Birds of Prey. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is I felt like she was so short in Scott Pilgrim, but in Birds of Prey, she's the tallest woman there. Yeah. Yeah. May, I, maybe they just have her on risers because she's maybe. supposed to be the tallest uh, I, you, character. She might be in like combat boots or something. Or that. Yeah. yeah which I, even they don't, they're not a huge amount, but. They always put Tom There's Cruise like an on extra inch in most industrial level boots. Yeah. Like my steel toes give me an extra bit of height. Yeah. And she's wearing some pretty you, big ones. They're supposed to be. And so you can, if you step on a nail. Yeah, and you can make custom like Hollywood stuff makes a lot of custom stuff too. So yeah, you, they they might have just gotten like really high platform yeah. combat. She also boots. has like a weird posture in that movie where like her chest comes out a bit more than her head. Like actually, I think this is actually what is considered perfect posture. That's right posture, especially yeah. if you're you want my to back just cracked like amazingly. You, when uh, I did if this. you're a, if you, I don't know if women are supposed to stand that way because boobs have weight and that might fuck your back up. I've never had them. Damn, she but, got that scoliosis body. <laughs> but if Damn, you're a guy, if you're a guy, you're supposed to puff your chest out. Yeah, earlier TikTok I saw this thing where it was like, "Is she that thick, or does she got that scoliosis body?" <laughs> <laughs> because you know, girls like they could do that shit with like their back, where it's like you know they're just standing like this, like you know, shitty posture. And yeah. Just go like this. It's like yeah. Hey, that's a bit more. Put your butt out. Put your- yeah. Oh, Ian is recreating my spine. <laughs> Ian is recreating the classic comic book character, female comic book cover pose, which is a, a pose where you twist and contort yourself so that you can see both tits and ass at yeah. the same time. I love when people make fun of that, where they try to draw the spine, and it's like the spine yeah. is a one eighty here. You can kind of do it, but like the amount of titty that's it's in it, tw- it's too much twist. Like so you can see this like a side profile where you get more of my boob. Yeah, but like there's too much. They it's like you see the center of the ass crack and the cleavage. It's like yeah. no, that woman is a pretzel. <laughs> yeah, you've spun the spine three times. Yeah, I don't know how I had like I like. I wish I worked on my posture my whole life. Because I see people, like, playing video games and they're, like, fully down. Like, yeah. But when I'm playing, like, I literally have my chair, like, 90% of the way. Like, my head is back against it. My arms are, like, out. Mm-hmm. I understand you're supposed to be in more of a relaxed position for ergonomics. But I fucking hate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you hear this, Ian, by the way? Yeah, we can go back to the news. <laughs> we can go back to the news. Did you hear... That George Miller announced Furiosa, a prequel to the Oscar nominated Mad is Max the, what Fury is, Road. Wait, Joji? George Miller, the director. Joji, the the singer, formerly racist YouTuber? No, George Miller, the Australian director of <laughs> yeah, all yeah. of the Mad Max movies and the Happy Feet movies. Yeah, what was the thing with Furiosa where like they, he said he would just recast Furiosa or something? Because it's a of- prequel? Yeah, to instead of make uh, doing digital face to make her look younger, they would just be like, yeah. just recast it. It's, it's, so they got Anya Taylor Joy. What does she look like? She is a big sort of up and comer the last five years. She was in The Vavitch. Hold on. Is Charlize Theron tall? Charlize yeah, Theron. Yeah, no, she is tall. I think she is tall, yeah. Because in she's the villain in Fast and the Furious right now. Remember, they put people on risers a lot in movies. Yeah, but here's the thing. I know Vin Diesel is shorter, <laughs> is like less than six feet tall. It's cute. She kind of has like a baby face. In that picture, the second Yeah, one. she's like, she's in a lot of horror stuff. Mm. Uh, but she was also in that movie Emma earlier this year, which I wanted to watch. Well, and maybe you can add that so you can bump weathering with you. On yeah, I just, I need list. to fucking watch it. Um, yeah, uh. Yeah, oh, they're Charlie- also, they also, sorry. So Anya Taylor-Joy is playing Furiosa. But uh, Chris Hemsworth and Yaha, uh, Yaya Abdul Mateen the second is are they're both in uh, unannounced roles. Mm. And Yaha Yaya Abdul Mateen, I'm butchering that fucking name. <laughs> uh, he he was great on HBO's Watchmen. Yeah. He had a fucking great run. He plays her uh, the main character's husband. Oh, damn. I thought they were, like, the same height. No, they lied. I know Vin Diesel's not... Uh, he's not, like... He's a big man, but he's not that tall. No, he's, like, 5'10". Yeah, but, Char- look, he's taller than Charlize Theron there. And I know Charlize Theron is taller than that. Yeah. So, I think they... T- <laughs> they Tom Cruise slash uh, Robert Downey jr him. Yeah. How tall is Vin Diesel, actually? All right, so, anyways, that's cool. Um... 
I would like to see it. I think I, I'm not a Mad Max fan. But you liked Fury Road. I think Fury Road is f- great. Have you seen any of the other ones? No. <laughs> well, we, I have all of them. That's why I just said I'm not a Mad Max fan, uh, implying that I haven't seen any of them. I thought you meant I'm not a Mad Max fan. I don't enjoy the Mad Max oh, franchise. Oh, I just haven't seen them, no. You know what? I, you can see how I... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. Like, if I'm like, oh, I'm not a Batman fan. I'd assume you're familiar with Batman, but that you don't like him. Mm. I've never had the chance to decide whether or yeah. not I am a fan. I don't know. I, you know how I am with old stuff. I'll just show old, you. Old, bad, favorite. new, good, caffeine, taste, bad. <laughs> Love to get a list of all of Ian's hot takes that make literally no sense. One piece is better than anything. This is my glass from last week. Yes. Man, y'all, this week was long. All the news shit I wrote down feels like it happened last week. I don't know. I've been off work all week, so my fucking week has just been uh, dragging. <sighs> okay, what else? What's next? Uh, it, Here's the newest news. Michael B. Jordan and his production company are producing the Static Shock movie, baby! Whoa. Is Michael B. Jordan trying his hand at DC now. Hey, DC. Um... Just Why? keep him, please. Hold on. Let the man have something. <laughs> yes. Keep Michael B. Jordan. Here's what I... Hold on. Let me just do this call-out post first. Yeah. Hey, DC, you know, you've made expensive Blu-ray full collections of Batman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, and Superman the Animated Series, and Justice League, and Justice League Unlimited, and Teen Titans. Uh, where is the fucking Static Shock collection? He's black. <laughs> Why is it only three DVDs and no Blu-ray version? Damn. Maybe you should make that up. Because I literally went on Amazon and I was like, is there a Blu-ray version of Static Shock? I want to watch that fucking show. Yeah. It's not. It's still on the DC Universe streaming service, which is shortly going to be the DC Universe comics only service. And then all the content on there is going to move to HBO Max. Sick. But we don't. We might get it. (laughs) We might get it on Crave. Or it might be sold to 50 channels. Who knows? Maybe HBO Max will come to Canada and then Crave becomes a little more useless. Yeah. Crave will be the HBO Go and HBO Max will be HBO Max. Wait, HBO Go still exists? (laughs) Yeah. I thought they were. Okay, I thought Max was a rebrand. That's dumb. No. Is HBO. Okay, is stuff that's on HBO Go on HBO Max? Um, Like, is HBO Go like the cheaper version? HBO Go is just HBO shows. HBO Max has most HBO shows, except for the ones that licenses have already been drawn on, and the DC Universe shows, and like a bunch of other bullshit. Okay, so HBO Max is still the better buy, unless you're a huge HBO stan. Yeah, unless you're like, oh man, HBO Max doesn't have... uh... Damn, I really want to watch... I can only afford one streaming service. I really want to watch all the DC shows, but I'm a real big fan of... Surfing or whatever the fuck Pete Holmes <laughs> like auto autobiographical sitcom isn't that is. called Crashing? I think so. No, wait, that's a different show that's on Netflix. That's uh, the Phoebe that's... Waller Bridge one. Ah, uh, fuck, I don't know, but Pete Holmes has that one that's just about how about his life when he was a young comedian because it's it's interesting, especially since he was like a um, fucking oh god super Christian. Can't remember the actual thing he was Episcopalian. No, no, I think more intense than that. But like he let he went to like a Christian college and everything. Is he a Jehovah's Witness like Donald Glover? I'm just gonna look it up right now. Um, Oh man, I forgot he was fucking huge. (laughs) Pete Holmes. Yeah, he's almost he's about Davis height. Wild. Yeah, that's a tall man. They put him on an anti riser when they shoot stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Dig a hole in the ground. Uh, I don't know who the fuck, um, the what is it, well, actually what his thing is. It just says that he was in the Christian comedy circuit. Is it like the Christian rock circuit? <laughs> yeah, probably. Where it's like it's not that funny. Mm-hmm. He went to a private Christian college. They kick you out of those if you drink or have sex. Yeah, so he didn't do any of that, and then he fucking like left, and then became like a comedian, and he left his wife and everything because his. He, like, fell out of love with the religion and such. Now he's, like, a spiritual dude. 
Mm-hmm. Where instead of being like, yeah, God exists and he's a monster who will smite you if you fuck or drink anything. And now he and he's like, why would God be such an angry man all the time? <laughs> Which if you're a Christian and you don't yeah. think like that, uh, you're wrong. Yeah. I'm not one to tell you how to live your life, but you're trying to tell me how to live my life. So. Hey, Christians, you know there's fewer lines in the Bible about how being gay is wrong than there are lines in the Bible that are about wearing polyester. Did you say that? Do you have... Oh, fuck. Shauna posted it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was either Facebook or Instagram or something. Yeah. But it was just this post. It was from Tumblr originally about how in the original Bible, like in I the know Old this. Testament... Yeah, where it doesn't say it's a le- it's wrong to lay with a man. It it says yeah. it's wrong to lay with a young boy. Yeah, because it was about because Greeks used to have in- intimate relationships with children. Yep. So it, it wasn't boy it wasn't them saying hey don't fuck other men. It's saying hey leave that child alone please. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, Ian, the reason why is because when it came to the first American translation of the Bible in 1945. They wanted to clamp down on fucking gay people. So they changed the line, yeah. the translation, intentionally, mm-hmm. politically. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> be gay, do crimes. Hell yeah. You know, Jesus beat the shit out of a banker once. Yeah. We should all t- live in Jesus' images and yeah. go to Wall Street and just start, just start kicking, kicking the shit ass. out of people. <laughs> I'm going to go find Jordan Belfort and kick I'm going to go ass. find Mike Bloomberg. And I'm yeah, going to bring a folding one. chair. I'm also going to go for Rudy Giuliani. I know he's very easy. <laughs> he's not know. a banker. He was. He was a wall. He was he's a, a lawyer. Guy. Actually, wasn't like Rudy Giuliani like kind of cool in the 90s? And then he no. became like a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, no. He no was, he, people thought he was cool because he he was the mayor during 9-11 time. He was the mayor during 9-11 and he handled it very well. And then yeah. he also was the dude who made smoking inside like illegal. And then people like that because him. it's like, yeah, yeah. it's reasonable. So it's like, yeah, he did these two things and he kind of like helped New York a bit. And he was Unless played by James black. Wood in a TV film. Yeah. And then turns out both James Woods and Rudy Giuliani are Trump supporters. Also, Rudy Giuliani's first wife was his cousin. <laughs> Yeah, but that was Abraham Lincoln's first wife as well. Mary Todd? Yeah, they were cousins. I don't think that's true. I think it is true. I feel like that would have been in the book I read about Abraham Lincoln's life. Um, well... The book Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> Fuck off. What? I read the book. That's true. That's a true fact. And I saw the movie. And, and you know what? It's a pretty good movie. And a pretty good book. It's not great. But, like, it's fucking called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Mm. What do you expect? But it's, it's pretty good. Damn. All right, maybe I was wrong. Whatever. All right, let's get into video game news. Yeah, cool. Nothing happened this week. Uh, <laughs> fully wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. There was, they showed off the UI. No. Ian, come on. You're going to Google this name the second I say it. Uh, New fighter Giovanna added to Guilty uh, Gear Strive. Why would I Google it? I watched it live. Okay, you did watch it. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, my wife. (laughs) She's a kick-based fighter with a dog. A dog stand. Oh, it's a dog stand? It's on, like, it comes, it's like, it doesn't have any hind legs. Oh, shit. It's just on her the whole time. And anyways, unfortunately, though... A cab does refer to Giovanna. She is a she works for this uh for the Well everybody presidents. in Guilty Gear works for the president of that country. So does the, answer the president of the United States. Oh, she works for the president of the US? Why would I talk to you right now, Siri? She is uh one of the members of a secret service. Soul bad guy doesn't work for anybody. No, but uh oh, answer. sorry, Frederick Bulsara. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I know the lore now. It doesn't uh, answer. Kisuke is a king. Yeah, cut. So that's that's worse than being a cop. Also, what's he the king of? A country. A country that existed after the after justice destroyed the planet in 2014. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably fucking. Uh... Oh, I found. I was watching these clips. I didn't even know this was like a real thing. They fit. They like they literally went through the relationship thing. Yeah. Where there's a scene from I think it's XX. Yeah. Where. Kai puts it together where he's like, wait a second. If Dizzy is Soul's daughter and I'm fucking Dizzy, well, they're they're married. Yeah. Does that mean, and Soul's going like, no! 
Stop it! <laughs> like, duh, I doesn't want... Because they're like... They're f- frenemies? Where, like, Soul plays it's... a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, But, like, they're both, like, trying to stop Justice. Or I think Kai is trying to kill Justice. And Soul's trying to save her. Because it's his girl... It's, it's Dizzy's mom. Yeah. It's his ex. And, but then R- Ramlethal and uh, Elfelt are there. And they're just going, like... Does that mean we're like siblings <laughs> or like you're my brother-in-law or whatever? Because they're genetic clones of, of justice, of, right? Yeah. The care, the person who became justice, the, and Jacko is half that person. Mm-hmm. Ari of Vale. I think her name is in the guilt. And then Earth, Dio's there. Yeah. Zato one just shows up. Unfortunately, he's going to need a new voice actor. Oh Yeah. Did you see that they announced Wait, that Strive's s- going to get a if they're like really on day and date will be a PS5 version and a PS4 version? That's good. Yeah. Very torn on where I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I'm going to get the PS5 version. Uh, just parsec though on PC. Yeah, but like, uh, you know the because there's cross platform only between the PlayStation versions. Okay. As far as I'm aware. But. Whatever. I don't know. I'm still in, I'm still torn. I'm going to see where Anthony's going to get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it makes sense for me to get it on PS5 because yeah. it'll be newer and fancier than my computer. Yeah. But, okay, so in the story trailer that they showed off as well. Yeah. There's a, they have like a thing where someone's in like this containment thing. And she like looks up and she's got like this short cropped red hair. Yeah. Which is exactly what Arya had. So, character 15 <laughs> yeah. is either going to be Justice or first DLC we might get Justice. Character 15 is probably going to be Biken. Yeah, I want to say... She like, won the worldwide we, popularity poll. We know the... F- yeah, we know that there's going to be... Like, in the... You can pay for, like... There's, like, a $10 extra deluxe edition or yeah, maybe... Yeah, which gives you the season $20, pass. Which gives you the first season pass. And they said five characters. Yeah, so 20, and then obviously there's more than one season in fighting games, right? There's going to be. Even games that aren't popular, like they get second fucking passes. Yeah. Like Grand Blue. (laughs) Well, Grand Blue sold well. Grand Blue is incredibly popular in Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, And also that game pays for itself because of the gotcha. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, So yeah, Strive going to get the first pass. Me and Anthony kind of took guesses at who's this going to be. And if Biken's not the character 15, she's definitely in the past. I think we're going to get Bridget. I think they're going to do Biken DLC again. I I don't think they should. Biken's way too popular. Yeah, but that's why. Because people <laughs> fucking buy it. But here's the thing. Biken's popular international, but there was, another, there was another character on top in Japan. And it was Bridget. Is that the guitar girl? No, that's Eno. Eno will definitely be Seasons Pass. Yeah. Yeah, she's one of the. I want to see characters. more but new characters because this character Bridget looks is a fucking character sick. From X Sign, she hasn't been in like the past two games, like Zerd Rev or Zerd Rev Two. Well, she she had if she's in Exard Sign, something in XX. Okay, yeah, sorry. Or X and I think it's X, there's X Sign X no, X and then Zerd. No, no, it's Zerd Sign Zerd Revelator Zerd Revelator Two. Then I That's never had Zerd the three, Sign. Yeah, we neither of us did. I just had Zerd Rev. Yeah. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so yeah, Bridget will probably be in the past because she won a, the pop, a popularity poll, just not the international one. Actually, I think it's supposed to be Exard. Uh, I think either Jacko. I hope... Actually, Jacko's never going to come back. She sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no one likes her. They're going to bring back... Uh, Elfelt. You, uh, yeah, Elfelt probably. I hate playing her, though. <laughs> I love her, but I hate her. Who's the other one that's like sort of a godlike character that comes back? Oh, maybe Jacko actually. Dizzy. And Dizzy, yeah. Uh, one of one or two of those characters are gonna come back because they're the characters that teach you the tutorial Johnny. in most games. Johnny is back, isn't he? No. Oh I wait. Thought they announced him. No, that's Axel Lowe. Johnny, there's Axel Lowe who wears like jorts. He looks like Axel Rose. Yeah. And then there's Johnny, who is like wears like a long black trench coat with a big hat. And uh, uh, the pirate girl wants to bang him, even though she's a no. child. Johnny is her dad. Her no. adopted father. Yeah, but that's 
you know how Japan. That's is. the weird thing. Is like yeah, you know, no, she's he, a child he like and... found her and like brought her in and like he made yeah. that whole pirate crew and shit. Yeah, like that he's character like a savior is, figure. To that them. girl's back and I. She's very fun to play in in Rev. So also, you can pet the dolphin. Yeah, yeah. I like her now that she, you know, she's an adult now. So she's aged up. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm not saying I liked I like her because I thought she was. Up. I don't think I liked her because I thought she was sexy. Oh no, I like how she plays. I think I like how she plays, and I thought she was like a cute design. I would never say a, sexy because that was a child one game before, and that's a cute design. About it. Yeah, I she, would say it's, she's she's cute, like uh, the yeah, way a child I is. I kind of wish her design was more similar to the old one because this is like the old one was like the big overalls with the dumbass big hat. Yeah, and she like swung it up. She has a less large hat. She it's, and it's well, more I think of a it's sweater. The same size. I think it's that she grew up, and yeah. instead of wearing the overalls, the it's overalls, more of a sweater. It's situation. a big sweater yeah. over like spats. Yeah, and it's like oh, I kind of wish it was more similar to the old design because like, overalls are fun. But then here's the thing. Yeah, maybe they wanted to keep a cute look, but then they decided that she would grow up, and maybe she got titty. Yeah, so they were like, no, cover it, because if you let, because then it's like literally just going horny. If you what take do you her mean? Old design, Woman can just wear Devil May Cry three Dante outfit. That's horny. I would Devil May Cry three Dante is not something I would call cute. I would call that horny as yeah. well. <laughs> That's a hot boy, man. Yeah, it's a hot man. He's a boy man. How old is he in that? I don't know. I think people say nineteen. Well, then old enough. <laughs> old enough plus one. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they just felt like keeping May as the cute character. Yeah. And not immediately going to horny. Because we got enough horny characters in that. Even uh, a character yeah. that has like a cute personality. Like like Alfelt's kind of has a cute. People thing. like Biken because you can see most of her tibby through the thing. Yeah. And also because she walks like this. Yeah. <laughs> she has that, she's got that based uh, uh, walking animation. Hell yeah. We just need more hot dudes. I just want to see more new characters. Because this character I saw like a very small clip of the fight. And I'm like, yeah. hell yeah, this character's fucking hot as hell. Yeah, she's got a <laughs> Beastie cool Boys ass uh, theme song. Yeah. Um, she's probably the coolest new character. Sorry, black dude, you lost. <laughs> I forgot about him. Because also his name is like... Because no. this game got announced so long ago. And they also, they went through, they announced, they put the first trailer out where it was obviously... That is bullshit, please. Yeah, it was See? Kai versus Soul. Which is obviously And we saw it. But then we went through the May trailer, mm-hmm. the uh, Chip Zanuff, yeah, Axel Lowe, Potemkin. Oh, yeah, Potemkin's and back. Because he's, he's the best. Yuki. Potemkin is one of the best characters to play as. <laughs> I was watching watching Octopimp stream for this. He's so good at Potemkin. Did you see? Did you see it, what his stream title was? By what? any chance? Number one Potemkin player in all of the world, specifically in California, and over the age of thirty. <laughs> and I'm like, that's good. That's, that's a good, good one. So yeah, that game sick. Looking forward to it. Sucks it's that like it's March or something. April. Right? April twenty first, April sixteenth or twenty first. I just want to see the fucking PS five Ultimate version be a pre orderable on anything other than the Arxis store because like I don't want to have to pay. Oh, you want the physical one? Yeah, because it's nice to have physical. Oh yeah, that and Steelbook. uh, What else? Just Steelbook. I think it's Steelbook, art book comes with the season pass. Okay, the art book sounds intriguing. That's I have about the, it. I have the art book version of uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction because when I wanted to play that game, it was old and the deluxe edition was really fucking cheap. Mm. So I was like, "Oh, cool!" And there's so much Tibby in the fucking art book. Oh, Blaze Blue is a horny game. Yeah, Blaze Blue is all horny. That's Actually, why most Arxis games are horny games. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Name me one that isn't Fist of the North Star. Is that an Arxis game? Uh, well, they're they made like three of them name a modern arxis game that's not horny do, do they have to develop it or just publish it mm. let's say they can publish it all right the missing uh jj mcfield and the island of lost memories i don't even know that one that's the sweary one that was the one i was telling you about it just came out two years ago uh, it's like it's like a side scroller. It's kind of like Limbo, but uh, the the puzzle mechanic is that like your limbs fall off, like you have to hurt yourself oh, to make limbs come off. The limbs are missing. <laughs> yeah. 
It's not horny. It's like a very sweet. There's lesbianism, but like oh, that's horny. If that's you're not gay, horny. It's horny. That's if there's anything horny. gay, it's horny. It's fully like it's so no, no, like no, no, tame. No. If I see a gay, there, I don't even horny. think they kiss. I think they just hold hands. Horny. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how it, like people go like, oh, there's gay characters in this. Oh, then this has to be PG-14. Yeah, that's up the at the age rating. Yeah. That's actually true, and that's why I love. The Love Simon TV sequel. Oh, you know what? Yeah, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Fighters. Yeah. Uh, there's a horny character. Android Twenty One or whatever. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There's two horny versions of her actually. Yeah, but you there's can only the play Boo one, one and the other one. You can't play the other one though. Yeah, but they're both horny. I wouldn't say she's not that horny as that version. Fine. Uh, Android. The other Android girl. The cute one. Eighteen. Eighteen. Not that horny. Uh, the other girl, Fidel. No, I was gonna say the one that Kefla. You, yeah, that's the one. Nah. All right, then Fidel. Nah. I just don't consider Dragon Ball to be that horny of a series anymore the because key, of the, the level of horniness he, that shit has gone. He up touched like. the the panty. He slap it. Goku. Yeah. No, I said. The uh, Dragon Ball now, oh, like Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, I don't think is that horny. I'd still say Android Twenty One counts. Yeah, I wish she was more canon than because it's because it's the only thing that Arcs has created, and it's the horniest thing in the game. Oh, they did. Tori, uh, Toriyama created Twenty One. Yeah, but it was for this. Oh yeah, but like that's what I mean. Like he created the design of, Tor- of her. So yeah, but I bet the person for, I bet fucking Daisuke Ono walked into the room and said Toriyama. Make it horny. <laughs> and he was like dick in hand going, Oh, more? Yes. Daisuke Sato and Daisuke Sato, because he makes all the music for Guilty Gear, so he's playing like, check this out. That is bullshit. No, no, make it horny. <laughs> <laughs> that is horny yards. <laughs> all right. I love that he does the fucking music. That's so cool. Yeah. What a cool man. I'm sure. Watch him immediately get canceled, and then I'm like, Oh, <laughs> oh no. He's not cool. <laughs> He's bad. I have to get a mod pack now to replace yeah. all the Guilty Gear music. <laughs> that That's like, might as well put a fucking bullet in your yeah, head. Yeah, uh, I might as well just turn it off. Yeah, might as well just put the game back on the shelf and lock it. Or just get instrumental versions. Yeah. <laughs> just be like, I can't well, no, hear he, him. He does, I can't uh, hear him, though. No. He does all the co- co- uh, composition. Like he, Yeah, but if I can't hear him sing, then I can just lie to myself. I don't think he usually sings. I think he just does like the music. But whatever. Uh Okay, and then there was an article that's actually about something really interesting. You can talk oh, I'll wait till you're back. I'll cut this part. I can hear you right here. Hey, but you can't say stuff. Yeah, but you have to say the whole article first. I'm not going to say the whole article, but... Okay, I meant the title and everything. Yeah. Like, I would have been back in time. So this is some interesting... This is some interesting info. This is this article. Uh, Snowberry. So... Hmm. Uh, so level five... Is a developer you may have heard of. Sometimes. I always forget about them, though. Okay. Ugh. Level 5 shuttered their U.S. operations, which is potentially going to hamper any future localizations of their work. Now, if you don't know what they've done, they did uh, the Dark Cloud series, uh, the Professor Layton series, the Nino Kuni series, uh, the Yokai Watch series. Honestly, games I don't care about. <laughs> and yeah. they did... They did uh, d- the two Dragon Quest games, mainline. I think I think eight and nine. Uh, I didn't play those. Uh, I bet I could find something that you give a shit about. You don't give a shit about Professor Layton. No. Mm. Uh, White Knight Chronicles. Did you play those? No. Rebel Galaxy. No. Hmm. Well, I'm, I don't know. Maybe you just managed to be completely bypassed by that. I think I did. I'm like looking at all these and like I don't know half of these games. You don't even know any of them? Like I know of Professor Layton and that's a lot of it, but yeah. I know the true two Dragon Quest games they did, I just didn't play them. Yeah. The PS2 one they did is Yo-Kai really Yokai Watch sucks, so I don't Yo-Kai care. Watch is better than Pokemon. Eh. It's cooler. It takes place in more say interesting. Yo-Kai Watch is like Mega Man Battle Network. Yeah, and Mega Man Battle Network is ten times cooler than Pokemon. Yeah, because also in Mega Man Battle Network you only play as one character. Yeah. 
Well, Just Yokai, cool. Yokai watches. Battle Network. Yokai watch you pick multiple characters. Like it's more, it's closer to Pokemon than Mega Man Battle Network is. Yeah, I don't know. I meant like the story of how they. Oh, do the it. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yokai watch is like there's ghosts. Yeah, I, I've skipped like all of these. Yeah, um, the Dark Cloud series is great. Rogue Galaxy is great. Uh, the PS2 know. Dragon Quest they did is great. Um, and if I can find like a physical copy of Mega Man Battle Network, like three. Five is the best one. Three is the one I'm nostalgic for. Okay. Yeah. I would fucking pop my... <laughs> break my Game Boy SP out again. Yeah, I, I know I just, exactly where it is. I, <laughs> I saw it yesterday. Well, also... Oh, yeah, never mind. I was yeah. going to say your DS, and I was like, no, wait, 3DS has stopped. I, I, no, I have, I have a DS as well. No, wait, no, I don't. The reason why the first DS I bought was because I was going over to Emma's house mm-hmm. where, back in, like, high school, and from the house I lived in, it was e- instead of like walking out of my front door, mm-hmm. like going around, I could just hop the fence in my backyard. And, and you it, broke your DS? I, yeah, like my fat ass pants, my tight pants and my fat ass body, like cracked my DS in my pocket. Sad. Yeah. We weren't going, I wasn't going over to play. Like we weren't going to like fucking trade or do anything with Pokemon or anything and shit like that. Yeah. So. It's not that big of a deal. It was more like I just had to sit there now when I wasn't doing anything. And phones weren't cool enough yet. Well, they were. It's just I didn't use mine for much. I had a job, though. Yeah. So all I did was just go in to work the next day, and I bought, like, or on my payday. Yeah. I bought a 3DS. Oh, so you don't have a base DS anymore. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't either. I just have my 3DS. Which I bought because all of my friends had 3DSs. And I, you know what? I played a good number of, I played some good games on there. Bradley Default. Mega Man Battle Network 4 for $32. Whichever the one that's cross-gen from, from it, there, there was like the version that's on DS and the version on that's on GBA. That might be 6. That's 6? I thought that was 5. That's why five I said 5. Was, I don't, I'm just going to look up the, go to the series. Because right. there's one that was like, that was like a cross-gen one and that one the DS version, which I did have a DS, I just don't know where it is. You know how like Chris was like is collecting like a bunch of PS2 games. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that with Game Boy games. That's cool because that's like the thing I was super. Into. I had I bought I bought repro carts of some stuff for Game Boy Advance because uh, back when we were doing Let's Play stuff, we uh, like we had a Game Boy player uh, hooked up to a GameCube here to do that with. And, like, I have no idea where I put those Game Boy Advance games that I bought, which sucks because one of them was a repro cart of Mother 3 with the fan translation. Oh, um, apparently 5 did have a DS one. Yeah, the, okay, that's the one I was telling you about. Because the DS version of that game is fucking incredible. I was always confused because whenever, like, the main character of that game's name is Lan, and I'm like, oh, it's so close. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Okay, this box art is throwing me for the DS one. The Double Team DS? Double Team, yeah. I think Double Team was like the uh, Pokemon Emerald version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, because it was like Team... It was the other... Like the GBA ones was called like Proto Man or some shit. It was like... Yeah, it was... Just, so, it, yeah, it's it's the it's the Pokemon Yellow, essentially. It was Team that. Proto Man and Team Colonel. I had Team Colonel. I honestly didn't like this one. And I've the, never played 6. Because the 6 DS, The DS version is a significant improvement. Yeah. Of that six was on the Game Boy Advance though. <laughs> That's dumb. That's weird. You know what? You know what it might be. What? Let me look at the release dates here. Maybe Double Team came out after six. No, came out. The, what the fuck? <laughs> um. Is it another Cap Capom goof? It came out in two five. Came out in two thousand five. And the DS version came out in two thousand five. The, they all came out in like 2005 and then oh. this one then 6 came out in 2006 and there's no DS version just GBA yeah man that's some Persona 4 shit yeah that's so fucking weird <laughs> Persona 4 in case you don't know if you're at home came out in 2008 or 2009 depending on the region on the Playstation 2 when the fucking PS3 came out in 2006 although if you had an early PS3 you could just play PS2 games on it so not a, that big a deal yeah, except you, except for my PS3, which maybe it was like stopped a test or something. working with PS2 games. Well. Maybe it sold bad on the DS. Maybe, maybe Double Team just didn't sell better. Yeah, so maybe they're like, whatever, finish the series on the Game Boy. And like, Game if Boy you own a, but, any, but it, the thing is, if you own a DS, you can play the Game Boy game anyway, yeah. so it's no big deal. So fuck. They didn't alienate any of their. 
people, so it's fine. But the DS version of five is really good. Because you get to do both. Yeah, you get both teams. You get both teams, and you get great frame rate, and you get like yeah, slightly it's improved. It's like Pokemon graphics Emerald, where it's like, hey, if either because if you play Pokemon like Pokemon Sapphire, it's like the grass Pokemon's overpowered. Yeah. If you play Pokemon Ruby, um, the water Pokemon's over overpowered, but at least in the fire one, like you could use Combuskin. Yeah. Or to Blaziken and Combuskin against Team Magma, but if you're on the fucking other one, it's like, well, might as well eat a dick. Mm-hmm. But uh, jumping back to level five, real sad that they're closing their American office. Hopefully, they it, like. Hopefully, anything that they oh, do yeah, in the future. Oh yeah, ripped up a bunch of people who lost jobs because it of was that. a very small office, I, it, and like they weren't very well run. Apparently, is a lot of info that people have come up out yeah, with. Still, people lost their jobs. Yeah, it still sucks for sure. Um, but yeah, it's like the the sad thing is, is like there are some of some of their games they self publish. So it's like, what are they going to do to bring stuff to America? And I think one of the people, uh, one of the people running the company, is like, yeah, we don't have any plans for Western stuff right now. And it's like, Yokai Watch yeah. Four isn't out here yet. Oh, that's and well, people love those games. That's a bummer for the people who like those. Um, my real thing that's I'm worried about is like, Nino Kuni is a, you know, like obviously like the second one is not yeah. perfect, but those games are great. <laughs> I, mean, I Milky Way was trending on Twitter. And I saw it was like, like the chocolate bar. It was tra- yeah, it was trending with Halloween, and it's, and it was like one has to go Halloween candy edition, and it's Snickers, Milky Way, Reese's, and Twix. Milky Way. Milky Way. Absolutely. Get rid of fucking Milky Way. I'm so sorry, guys. They're I'm, not even I'm that not bad. Milky Way. It's not that bad. It's just Twix, Reese's. Snickers is a better is a better Milky Way. Yeah. So like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, man. Like. And everyone here is like, yeah, Milky Way, Milky Way. And say someone is like, someone was like, I pray for your soul if you think Milky Way is better than any of those three. Twix so. is two. It's two fucking chocolate bars. Well, not in the, not in the Halloween candy version. Oh, you're right. It's just that one piece. You know what? You're right. Yeah. Is that the one piece reference for this week? I stopped doing those. <laughs> You said the word One Piece. One Piece this week was pretty sick, though. I haven't read it, actually. It's just been really good recently. Because they're finally in the battle they've been building up over, like, 100 chapters. Well, Ian, do you know what else is really good? What? Continuing the trend of consistently mentioning the Yakuza franchise every week. Oh, is there news? There is news, (laughs) Ian. Fuck yeah! I always have to drag something up because (laughs) we always wind up fucking talking about it. Yeah. So Sega is celebrating its 60th anniversary. Uh, and it's doing that by having a bunch of random limited releases. The only one we're talking about... Streets of Camarocha. A remake of Streets of Rage 2, but with Yakuza theme. I bought it. I downloaded it today. It's free. I need to. But, like, it's only available for, like, three days or something. Yeah, and, well, once you get it, you have it forever, so... That's good. I think, you know what they might do? It's only free for three days. Mm. And then probably ten bucks for the rest. It didn't say that. Though. Unless they Pokemon it. <laughs> or, it no, not Pokemon. Mario. Mario. I think they're Marioing it. Because they're also because it's such a small like it's like it's like an hour of game like it's yeah. not even a full game. Well, Nintendo's doing that to boost up sales for the final quarter and shit for with Mario Thirty Five and shit. I think Sega's just doing that because it's a temp, just a I fun th- limited thing. I, yeah, I think Sega's literally like this is purely for enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're they're also releasing that like Golden Axe uh, thing that they did. Like mm-hmm. it was like a someone did a fucking. Uh, like a what's the word uh, pitch demo essentially I think for Sega, Sega. The, it's kind of good that Sega got fucked up in the early 90s yeah because like now they have bangers like Sonic still kind of sucks like the 3D Sonic games alright sure like Sonic Mania is good Mania that's is because great because it's a that's it's, a fan game yeah. it's a fan but also when Nintendo sees people making fan games they say, hey, stop it. And the fan people are like, would you like some of our work? We would love yeah. to see you do an official re-release. And they're like, no. And then they send like a D-team development staff to fuck it up. Whereas Sega just let it happen? Sega was like, here's money. Make it better. This looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, the reason... We all know the reason why, though. What? Because... Well, so Christian Whitehead was a fan game sonic maker but then he got a job to do the ios ports of the genesis sonic games uh-huh. and those were considered the best versions of those games yeah, so but also like just give people like chances to make yep. things better instead of it just being like let's just keep fucking up 
Yeah. Like, I don't know. what three. What's the last good 3D Sonic game? Forces. You think Forces was a good game? It's not a perfect game, but it's good. I would... S- Have you played it? <laughs> no, but I've There you go. I watched, people, I watched Anthony play that for fucking five days straight because he was trying to 100% it. Then that's the not fun way to play it or experiencing it. I will, no, I, well, I watched him play through it the first time. I watched... Um, that game's Al- fun. Alpha it's Rad just did, short. A, did like a thing of it a long time ago where his friend, who's like a giant Sonic fan, made their own character and went through. I don't know. I just think... It's fun. It's just short. Generations is the last good one before that. Okay, I guess. That I game's don't, great. I don't like the t- some things about Generations, but it does. It's good. Yeah. I don't Maybe I'm just not a Sonic fan. <laughs> yeah. Because the that, 3D, the, the regular... Sonic, the Sonic Adventure 2 was the last good one, in my opinion. The regular Sonic parts of Sonic Unleashed are good. Sure. It's never. just the Werehog God of War stuff sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, Yakuza's perfect. <laughs> Yakuza's great. Yeah. That's Persona. Right. And, they're even, and they're trying they to do bu- things. Sega bought Atlas and didn't fuck everybody over and actually managed to consistently do good stuff. And made two good games, except the second one was just a remake of the first one. Since Sega bought Atlas, we got um, Persona 5. Uh, yeah. Uh, Catherine, full body. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wait, B5 did Catherine Bro. full body come after Catherine? Oh, okay. I know it came after Catherine 1, but was that after the buy? Yeah. Full Body came out more recently than Persona 5. Just the original Catherine. So I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. The original Catherine was when Atlas was not owned by Sega. Yeah. Okay. And then we got Persona 5, which yeah. was also in development for a long time. Maybe it was. Sega buying Before the Sega, yeah. Sega bought the company and they yeah. were like, here's a bunch of money. And then they were like, oh no, if only we could make this old shit better. And they're like, golden that shit. Yeah. And then they made Royal. Except now... Persona fans think they're so smart and go like, oh, Atlas is just trying to steal our money. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so Persona 5, regular and royal, uh, Catherine Full Body, uh, River City Girls. Well, they published Ar- River City Girls. Way oh, wait, no, that's not, that's not Atlas. Did. Never mind. That's Arxis. Arxis. Yeah. But I think Way Forward made, made River Way City Forward World, made but it. But Arxis published. So, uh, but what else did Sega do? Sega did, um, especially with Atlas. I mean, they got Joker and fucking Smash Bros. That's pretty cool. A Sega rep. <laughs> yeah, another one after Sonic. And um, we're still okay, waiting so on Kiryu. When did they fucking not happen? It, it could. Kiryu for Tekken, a game I also don't like. I'd, I'd rather to watch. Hate to play it. I'd rather play Tekken than Smash. That's fine. Okay, when did they acquire thing? I think in 2014. Okay, so I'm trying to go up to. I'm on Atlas's Wikipedia right now. Actually, let me Google. When did Sega buy Atlas? It was actually Sammy that bought Atlas, but whatever. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Persona Q. Tesla Effect, not Tetris Effect. Oh, Sega bought Atlas uh, November 2013. Okay. So the first game that came out after that was Persona 4 The Ultimax Ultra Suplex Hold, which is the arcade version. Yeah, that's so they did fucking the, next the second major Persona game was Arena. in 2014 was P was Persona Q, and then P4 Ultimax, Etrian yeah. Odyssey, Devil Survivor 2, Etrian Mystery Dungeon, P4 Dancing, Hell yeah, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Yep, Odin Sphere, Lefrace here, yeah, so a bunch of their best games, yeah. And then redone re- redones of their previous good games that had not Sentinels. been re released. 13 Sentinels I want to play. That just came out. Just came out in English. It's been out for a year. It came out in November yeah. 28, 2019, but that's only initial release. That's, yeah. That, I wanted to play. It's a vanillaware game, and they're great. I mean, Odin Sphere is great, but I really want to play 13 Sentinels. I've heard it's really fucking good. Yeah. So anyways, Sega. Sega, Atlas, just steer. gotta love them. Does that mean we don't criticize them? We'll criticize the fuck out of Sega. Don't worry about it. Sega is owned by Yaku- by people in the actual Yakuza. Yeah. Or have shareholders in the actual Yakuza. Could be worse. It could be owned by people who are in the actual Sakura Wars. I don't know what that means, but I know that's a Sega game. <laughs> yeah, that's the joke. It's like you're like owned by people in the actual Yakuza. And I was saying a different oh, okay. Sega yeah. franchise. <laughs> Sega they're also no. They're also owned by people who would have their hearts stolen by the Phantom Thieves of Hearts. Yeah, 
Or the Valkyria Chronicles. <laughs> Straight up, fan, be it Persona 5 fans are the cringiest of all fans. Yes. Like, oh, guys, stop. Persona is that good cringe, though. Persona, it's like... It's you, just a you're game... You're gonna hate me for this. Yeah. Persona is kind of like Rick and Morty to me. But but the actual... Unlike Rick the and Morty... The actual product... I know you're gonna just say the actual that Rick and Morty's bad, but that's your opinion. No, no, no. Not bad... It's Persona 5, the actual product, and yeah. the themes of that game I'm not saying, do not encourage the cringy behavior, which is what I think Rick and Morty I don't think Morty Rick does. and Morty encourages cringy behavior. Other than the Szechuan sauce thing, nothing else. I was... I was uh, just the fact that like they portray Rick as, you know, the way he is, where he's like, I'm too smart to, and I'm allowed to be shitty because I'm smart. Oh, uh, yeah, he never really gets comeuppance for being he shitty. He never gets comeuppance. But come just up regardless, what, you, you know what I'm trying to say, is that yeah. they're, good, they're good pieces of media, but the fans suck ass. Sure. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought what you were going to compare Kingdom Hearts to that was going to be annoying to me. Or, fuck, Persona to Kingdom Hearts. I thought that's what you were going to do. No. I don't know anything about Kingdom Hearts. I thought you were just going to make it like Persona or like the kid. Persona kids are like the kids that do Parking Lot Kingdom Hearts. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Is that like You LARP? haven't seen Parking Lot Kingdom Hearts? Is that like LARPing Kingdom Hearts in a parking lot? Yeah, okay. it's a famous video. <laughs> I haven't. Show I'm going to show after. it to you right after the podcast. All right. So, Sega Cool Boys, what's up next? Uh, that's all I have for video game news. But I feel like I missed something, but whatever. Is that an hour six? Yeah, an hour six minutes. Man, it feels like so long because you're such a fucking chore to talk to. Fuck you, you. <laughs> you giant piece of shit. I have things this week that you're going to hate. Like? Just the video games I played. Okay. Uh, Why don't I go first and make Ian mad? No, Ian gets to go first because I talk throughout the news section more. Uh, I don't know. Think, oh, you, you want to know another real life news thing? What? So, someone caught a picture of Billie Eilish not wearing the man's oh, clothes. Oh, that's so fucking stupid. Yeah, like, yeah, maybe there's a reason why the woman wears clothes, like big clothes all the time, because she doesn't want you to objectify her. And now it's like, wow, look, she looked kind of frumpy Eilish in this looks picture. looks like a fucking wine mom. Yeah, gross. She's like 20. She's like not even. She's eight, recently 18. I know uh, recent, but I'm also not very good with. Yeah, I think she turned 18, like, last year, so maybe wow. she's 19. Billie Eilish shares her epic response to body-shaming tra- trolls. I, I'm i sure her response is good. I just hate how that's written. It's You know what? That's the problem, man. People are like, people are like oh, do I see a woman? I, oh, I guess I'm entitled to... <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm entitled to criticize said woman for anything they do at all, any time and the way they look yeah. as if they're not a human person. If I, like I walk, I went to the fucking grocery store in this outfit, in fucking track pants and shit. Like I look like a huge piece of shit, well, like twenty four seven. Even if you were a famous man, but I'm a people man. would just be like, "Wow, he's just like." Say you were a famous man. They're like, "Oh, and Nathan's some, looking and, comfy in this outfit." Yeah, and they, but they, but you, because you were rich, you would have like a tailored shirt yeah. that was like just made like your disgusting body just looks slightly less gross. I'm not sa- all. No, no, I'm not joking. trying to be mean to you. Your That's body fine. looks much better than mine right now. Oh, um, but like you look, you're looking better. Honestly, no, I've felt like shit this whole week. I'm about to go. I'm about to quit drinking again. <laughs> That's, I've literally been on a positive. bender this week for actually to quit. I'm probably gonna quit till like I'm gonna go for a month. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll just go to Christmas. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like, that's a that's a goal to do. Well, I've done it before, like multiple times. Well, twice. Which I could say is multiple. <laughs> um, Ian's going to participate in No Natty November. Because he loves Natty. I've been no Natty, natty forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe. <sighs> we were like looking at some horny shit last night on Discord. Because we were just looking at like hot monster ladies. <laughs> And uh, listen, Ian, just dial it down to once every two days. What? That's a, that's good enough for November. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, no, but then like Anthony does it every year, and Jacob was saying maybe he'll do it this year. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I also thought about doing it, but I give up so easily. 
I just don't because care. Because work is stressful. Yeah. And it's a nice, it's a and literal j- nice release. It's a release to jack off in the bathroom at work. Of course. But that's not what I was saying. <laughs> that's exactly what you were saying. I read you 100% it's clear. It's not that nice of a release to jack off at work. <laughs> it's, a, it's loud and clear. I get it, dude. <laughs> <I'm> fucking, <laughs> you love to jack off at work. No, no I problem. like to go home. <laughs> Get not, get in my bed and then go, and then get go my back to work and, and go back to work <laughs> and jerk off in the parking lot. All right, I know Nathan's really pushing this. I don't do that. <laughs> Just I thought have it to was go a through four hundred one traffic twice. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I do it before I leave. I do it right uh, right before I get in the shower. Yeah. So yeah, don't shame a woman's body, especially an eighteen yeah. year old. Yeah. Hey. Remember when you were 18? Did people say that shit to you? Maybe they shouldn't have if they did. But yeah. also, they probably didn't. So don't talk shit on people. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's like, have you not read a, a one word about fucking body shaming in the last 10 years? Like, I think many people are like, oh, yeah, I did have shitty opinions about people based on their size. I need to fix that about myself over the last, like, whatever, 5, 10 years when that became a more popular thing to talk about. <laughs> right? Like... <laughs> Anyway, let's get into them weeks. Um, Ian, talk about a thing you did. Because I only have uh, two things, and one of them might be a thing you did. I don't know. I played more, I played more recently. Yeah. AKA, like, yesterday and the day before. The Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War beta. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that last night on yeah. Among Us. That game is actually pretty fun. Well, it's Call of Duty. It's, it's Call of Duty. Fun, Call yeah. of Duty is always very well made. But I remember when I played, I played the open beta for the last Call of Duty. Yeah, I fucking hated it. I had the worst time. You want to know why I think it's better this time? Because the Black Ops games are a little bit faster. Crossplay is enabled. <laughs> oh, also it might be that, but crossplay is enabled. So I think it's because I'm playing mm. against kids on consoles. And while a console player can beat a PC player. Especially when they're as bad of a PC player no, as Ian, I am. Hold on. I am looking at your Twitter and I just saw that you made a tweet saying skill based matchmaking ruins games. Fuck off. I actually I made a joke actually to Anthony about that the other because I had like the final game I played one night, I did really well. I got a like solid two yeah. KD. I like dominated the whole fucking round. Like went like thirty two and sixteen. It was an objective-based game type, so it's not yeah. like I was my like sixteen was also helping the team, like yeah, you know, shit like that. So I fucking did that, and I sent him a a, a me- oh no wait, the last game I played, I went thirty six and uh, thirty two and sixteen. Damn. The game before, I went like twenty and two. So I sent him a message going like, skill-based matchmaking is literally ruining the entire gaming community. I just went 32 and 6 with only a two a measly 2.0 KD. The game before I had a 24.0 kill to KD. This is bullshit. I should be playing that good always. They should never adjust my skill. <laughs> I should be playing with scrubs. I'm a Call of Duty YouTuber. I need these gameplays. <laughs> I, I need, need to, to look my around. best at all times. <laughs> yeah, if skill-based matchmaking is an important thing so people can have a fair playing ground. So you're going to do you think you're going to buy that uh that War Crime Call of Duty game? Here's the thing I uh, <laughs> It said PC early access. It didn't have the asterisk that said you had to buy it before uh starting on the 15th. So I'm sitting there drunk at like midnight. I already had the game downloaded cuz they let you preload into the beta. So I'm sitting there like trying to like launch it. Like, why won't it let me? And then I clicked on it and it it wanted me to pre-purchase. I'm like, ah, shit. I'm like, whatever, I'll wait. And then I got really bored like five minutes later and I went and bought the game. Well, now you got to tell me (laughs) Now I'm going to play. I'm going to play through the whole game when it comes out. And every time Ronald Reagan speaks, I'm just going to be like, trickle down economics. (laughs) The AIDS crisis is not an issue. I'm not going to say anything about the AIDS crisis. Black people are monsters. <laughs> we're gonna. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Ronald Reagan said that. <laughs> we're gonna import all the cocaine and ruin the hood. <laughs> and we're gonna call it crack. <laughs> we're gonna make it more illegal to do crack than it is to do cocaine, because only white people do cocaine. What, what's oh man? What is it? It's like if you have four milligrams of crack on you or something, mm-hmm. you can go to prison for like ten years, but you have to have like 
a full ounce of cocaine to yep. even be arrested. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because guess what? That's actually still that. That's, that's still, one of that's one of. I mean, Joe Biden worked on the fucking policy that made that happen, but now he's saying he's going to rescind it to make the, to get rid of the crack cocaine disparity. But that's still there. It's the same shit. It's just you do it differently. Yeah, one is cheaper and you smoke it, and the other one's more expensive and you put it up your nose. Yeah. One's like, the other one's... <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to go yell at random people on the street. And guess what? If you've called yourself a crackhead... Fuck you. Uh, you're probably classist. You're probably 16. <laughs> you're probably 16 to live in the middle of America, and uh, like middle America sort of shit. Yeah. And like your friend just goes like, Ah! I'm such a crackhead! <laughs> It's like literally it does the same st- same thing as coke and they're two different stereotypes because one group is poor and the other is rich. And also like when you see like a poor when you see like some homeless dude on the street who's like tweaking you're like that dude's probably a crackhead. It's like no he might be on like, heroin as well. Come on guys. Or meth. Yeah. Meth's or that. the tweaking There's one. There's tons of drugs that yeah. homeless people do to cope with the fact that they are homeless. And guess what? A recent study in BC said if you just give homeless people $7,500, it's more cost effective and they're more likely to get their life put together yeah. than fucking the whole shelter and charity system that we yeah, have going also on. Also, cooperative housing yeah. and like shit like that. Well, yeah, again, because homeless shelters will probably will frequently like kick also, people out for doing drugs or being gay. We, I lived near a place, uh, cooperative housing. That's cool. Yeah. Well, like I'm saying, it's there, and it's like I never thought there was anything bad there. No, like uh, one of our friends lived there for a long time. Two yeah. of our friends did actually. Oh, you know they both the Ryans. Oh, like uh, they're they. That's how they knew each other is they lived across from each other, and then like I went to school with both of them, but I knew one of them there, and I would hang out with them, but just go across the fucking road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's like cooperative housing and shit. But it's yeah. like. I didn't. None of those kids were bad. Nothing they were wrong all with that nice shit. Kids. Yeah, yeah. Even their parents, all lovely people. Yeah, man. Yeah. So like. So let's just give homeless people seventy five hundred dollars. Just fucking do it. Give just give them seventy five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. It literally costs less than a shelter and has better results. Except I think I did talk to one of them about that one time where that cooperative housing is also not great for helping you leave the housing. Yeah. It's like you're kind of just there. And you can't really like gather money. <laughs> yeah, but it's still like a cheaper. Living. That's why I loved the BC thing because again, the study was they found like two hundred homeless people, just gave them seventy five hundred dollars with no question. I was like, uh, you're wait, homeless. Was it once? Just a one time, give them seventy five hundred dollars, okay. and by the end of the year, they found that mo- that more than half of them still had a thousand left, and. A majority of them had got had uh, started well, getting off around. drugs and had found a permanent residence and were looking were looking for or had gotten work. Now here's the real question: <clears throat> Did any of them overdose? <laughs> because I, that's always the thing that people like the stereotypical thing people so, say about homeless people, especially. So I don't think areas. any of them died in the study. That wasn't the article didn't say that. Um, but what they did say was like. Most of them found that if you just give them money, they might still buy drugs because they're addicts, right? But they started spending less on drugs and alcohol because they knew they had to take care of themselves and this was their chance, right? Yeah. But this but when you get to how one did, of these I shelters how they, which like found them again. Huh? Like how did they go? It's about a study. Finding... You like have to take down their information. But they're homeless. You're in conversation with them. Like you can you... I but like if you So you find if I go to fucking Toronto. Yeah. I find a guy panhandling outside of Union Station. I, it's not like it was like a, a professional. They probably study. called them in and shit, yeah. or like went around and had people pick them up and just be like, yeah. "Hey, in a year, come back, or here's our number." Call yeah, us hey, and check in every here's seventy five hundred dollars. Yep, do what you got to do with it. Give us calls. Yeah, <laughs> frequently. Maybe they had like let a, us know what's a, going on, a, like an actual per like. Yeah, because if it's a study that could give out seven hundred seven seven thousand five hundred dollars, yeah, to over two hundred people. Yeah, so they probably had a guy who was just like. Or like a group, like an office building where it's like, just come in if you want. Yeah, it was, well, it was probably, what's going probably part of a and university. And maybe they had like a guidance thing. Yeah. But the, maybe they just didn't use it. Yeah. But regardless, still. Yeah. But they, it's they like... Got, they got it's at like least the sh- a hun- more than 100 homeless people off the street. The system... And what they were saying is like, the system that exists in BC right now costs $50,000 per homeless person. Per That's unhoused a lot person. For a yeah. year? Every year, fifty thousand dollars a year for every homeless person. That's like a salary. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Like that is so much money, and that's how much the shelter system and all that bullshit 
costs, yeah. right? And it turns out you could literally just give them $7,500 right away and the majority of them are going to get their life together better than they would in the shelter system for so much cheaper, for a fucking fraction of the cost. Yeah, damn, maybe... Maybe... Oh, damn, I, I don't know. I just think sometimes the government... I know it's a radical idea. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. The government should, like, help out its people. Yeah. Well, it's almost as Instead if... Instead of bombing other nations it's almost as if that the that the the stigma around homeless people and the mentally ill and drug addicts it's entire is incredibly classist is entirely classist and manufactured and when you take a look at it with any empathy or factuality yeah, why are we trying it's to be untrue. like the british like well let's stop that yeah because that's where get that bitch off my money pure bitch. classism is most is like yeah. classism is still prevalent in England. There, there was a rigid caste system what the fuck was it oh even michael kane yeah. He speaks with a nat- with the Cockney accent because he was he grew up poor. Yeah. And then he go- he went when he went to go get roles, yeah. they would like turn him away being like we're looking for a, a refined man and he could like yeah. with his I would say Michael Caine yeah. and with his Cockney accent is more refined than I, I've ever seen. Yeah. But then it's like you go back and then he would like go in and he'd be like Hello, my name is Michael Caine. Yeah. And then he Or got- no, he did his Caine wasn't his last name. He like yeah. showed his Last name was like something, something more Irish else. or something. Yeah. So he like changed his name to sound more a little fancy. bit like yeah, higher class. Yeah, Kane but, is a much more sounding than. I was just gonna say your last name, <laughs> O'Shaughnessy. I didn't know what you. I didn't know if we if you ever. said I think it, so it I might like, be. I don't know. Yeah. So I just kept left it out. <laughs> yep. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Michael. Yeah, Michael Kane. He's great in fucking all those old. Uh, heist movies like uh, fucking what's that movie called? Batman Begins. <laughs> uh, Italian Job. I didn't see it. The original Italian Job. Yeah, oh, from the seventies. Not the Mark Wahlberg one. <laughs> was Mark Wahlberg in the newer one? I think he was. I, I, I think Jason Statham was in it. Yeah, Jason Statham was. Because that was a, like Jason Statham's like. There's a reference to it in world. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I did a job in a, in, a t- in Italy. I fucking- but they don't drive the. The Mini Coopers in Italy in the Italian Job 2004. Yeah, I, God, I do. Seth Green's in that one. That's who's in that. I do love uh, Jason Statham every time. Yeah, I think he's a very funny guy. But yeah, the lead, the lead of the original Italian Jobs, Michael Caine. Who's trying to tell me that Jason Statham's an asshole? I don't know. I feel like every single time I thought you I, said that to me. No, I don't think so. Because he just seems like a very. I, he I've seems heard, like an asshole. He he kind of looks like an asshole as well, and he plays assholes all the time in his movies. I don't yeah. think there's ever been a Jason Statham role he's played where he's like, "That's a nice guy." Uh, maybe in the one. Damn, F. Gary Great did the Italian job. Yeah, F. Gary Great, yeah, the director. F. Eight. Yep. Top three. Marky Mark. Only one of those Charlize people hasn't been in, in a Fast, Fast and the Furious, Furious. and it's the, the one that committed a hate crime. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> That Mark Wahlberg's gonna show up and kill Han in Fast and Furious Nine. <laughs> oh no, sorry, he's gonna blind him. <laughs> Han's not even Vietnamese. Mark Wahlberg doesn't care about You're that. You're right. Is what is Han? I think he's Korean. I thought he's no, because his cause, name yeah. is Han Seol, like Seoul. Yeah. Sorry, I always say it wrong. Yeah. Because <laughs> just you know that E has to Han Solo. Yeah. I, I don't yeah, know I guess because Seoul is in South Korea, so he, maybe he's South Korean, or yeah. maybe whoever wrote Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift is a racist. Maybe, but it's directed by an Asian man, so the later ones were no. The Tokyo Drift was directed by an Asian guy, Justin Lin. Yeah. Oh yeah, Justin Lin did do three. Yeah. Um, where's he from? And he did. Um, he did one of the he's Korean. So yeah. So he's just living in Tokyo. Yeah, that's his thing, and um. In there as well. I'd They're, watch that movie again. You should, I don't know. You should watch all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but none of them are as good of like just essentially being like a shonen story that's like straightforward and fun than fucking Tokyo Drift. I would say five and six are very fun. No, but I mean like I've seen five. 
Five's not that good. It's bad. It's a bad, and it's not. It's not good. I in think the... Five is just kind of fun to watch, but it's the one where it's like it's not a car movie anymore. It's a heist movie. Yeah. Six brings cars back into it. Five is so not a car movie that there's a scene where they pull up. There's an off-screen to, race. To, there's an off-screen. The uh, only race, race in the movie is off-screen, yeah. and they're all racing the same oh, boring car. Han is supposed to be Japanese. But he's Korean. The actor's Korean and his last name is Sol O. Like, actually. Yeah. No, I told you yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I remembered that from the movie being like, God, that's fucking dumb. And he lived in Hong Kong. Oh, he was in Hong Kong with Gal Gadot at the beginning of Six. Uh, But yeah. I'm I probably come I'll, back at nine, though. He's very fun. Again, I'll, I'll watch Tokyo Drift again. That's a fun movie. Yeah. Also, there's a little thing about it. Who is it that calls him out? I think it's Gal Gadot where she calls him out and says that he's a he's a recovering uh, Alcohol- alcoholic. No, no, no. Uh, cigarettes. Like Smoker. He quit, he, yeah, he quit smoking because he's always eating, so he's always doing something with his hands. Right. And like that was I. I don't know if that was like his original intent. That's like Maybe something that's he what created the in the original does. movie. Like, isn't that a Brad Pitt thing? Is he's always eating in like his scenes. That's just Brad Pitt. He just likes, yeah, he just likes to eat. <laughs> yeah. He's just like put a nice steak in front of me for this scene. He finishes the steak. He goes like, "We need to do another round." Well, we need another More shot. <laughs> we need some pickup shots. Can I get the steak back here? The commentary that I heard that was really funny is, um, I in one of the first episodes of Firefly. Like they're eating food with chopsticks yeah. and like the, the like, what's it called? The, the, the button on one of the, uh, on the scene is like Captain Mal says something and then like bites into a tomato, uh, on, uh just on the chopstick, like takes a big bite. Yeah. And Nathan Fillion doesn't like tomatoes, oh. <laughs> and, but he made that choice the first time that he did the thing because it's a good button on the scene. Like it's just so like he, just he takes a huge bite, so you had to keep taking a, a huge bite of a tomato like five, six, seven times in a row. That sucks. Yeah, to get the coverage. Man, speaking of tomatoes, have you ever had a Caprizio salad? Yeah, they are so good. Isn't it Caprese? I have no idea. I'm not Italian. I went to Italy. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> fuck you. But I was like, oh, fuck. Let me make burrata. They use burrata on that, right? Oh, the cheese? Yeah. I forget what. Uh, let me check this because I was talking to Stevie about this fucking salad last night. And now I feel really uh, embarrassed. Caprese salad is just tomatoes with cheese on top, yeah, right? Yeah, but it's burrata. That's what I was talking about, thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Caprese yeah. salad. Oh, wait, Capriccio salad seems to be a different thing. Caprese salad is the one that you were talking about, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> wait, is it really? Yeah, if you scroll down, you can oh, see yeah, the Capriccio yeah, is something Caprice, else. Caprice, not Capriccio. But anyways, burrata is fucking $15 for 250 grams. Yeah, it's expensive and imported. But I was the reason why I was talking about it was because I was on TikTok. I, like, when, we're just waiting for Anthony to get back so we can continue watching like an anime last night. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm just like, whatever, go to TikTok and we're just going through my likes, looking at all my thirst posting and all that thirst liking. I don't post anything. Yeah. But it was like this one where this woman's just like, you have to stop ordering food. Buying food like is still spending money or something. And it's like, come over to cooking TikTok and we'll teach you how to save money by cooking. But it's over them making a Capri salad. Yeah. And it's like, cool. So to make this fucking like she just took like a bun a bunch of like heirloom tomatoes not heirloom fuck they're like those mixed cherry tomatoes where it's like oh, yeah, different yeah. shades of red half them or no she didn't even half them normally you do but she like roasted them in the oven for probably 15 minutes at like 400 took him out balsamic drizzle a little bit of garlic well the garlic went on before actually fuck yeah balsamic drizzle the burrata cut it open with like some mint on the side and I'm like, cool. Just because of the burrata, this whole fucking salad is probably worth twenty dollars. She might well, live somewhere where it's cheaper. I don't think so, unless you live in Italy. <laughs> I don't know. If you live in fucking uh, places with big Italian, maybe New York. Yeah, New maybe York. Maybe New York has like some bakeries and shit. Yeah, or delis where yeah. it's like, here's some burrata for five dollars. Hey man, I've I've heard that New York. Has all those good bodegas and stuff where you get everything super cheap and shit. Yeah. Okay. So maybe there, but for 
everywhere else in North America. Did you see the Bodega Cat in Spider Man? I did. It looks good. It's pretty cool. Was that like a whole gameplay thing that they put out? Uh, I didn't it's watch if that. you're wearing, it's like a little bit, but essentially you save the Bodega, and if you're wearing a certain outfit, the Bodega Cat is in your backpack. Mm. Like Persona 5. Yeah. Anyways, Bodegas look nice. Yeah. I wish they were a concept that existed in more places. It's kind of like whenever I see Japan. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, where are we going for dinner? And it's like, oh, uh, where if it's like here, it's like, where the fuck are we going for dinner? It's like a yeah. uh, random chain restaurant or a pub. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, if you want to yeah. stay within our neighborhood. Yeah. If you want to drive to Toronto, we can find more places, but they're all like. I really wanted not to take really you to that houses. one bar. I yeah, I wanted to go too. <laughs> Yeah, because like mahjong place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and then that we like fucking super... ask Chris, he's like, I don't know how to play mahjong, and it's like it was for cocktails mostly. Yeah, like I said to the thing, it's just I was like, yeah, this bar is called mahjong. It's like a cool cocktail bar that's a speakeasy. I'm sure we could actually play mahjong in front of us, but I didn't see any there when maybe I went. You could, maybe it's an option. Maybe you could. But also, maybe it's an I wouldn't option. play because I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> unless I learn, I gotta learn how to play it for fucking yakuza. But like, yeah, it's so hard. You don't have to do everything I in the game. I want to, though. <laughs> but if you don't like it... Well, to finish Yagami's stuff in yeah. Judgment, you gotta. Which mm-hmm. sucks. Especially since I fucking did it once. <laughs> and then it didn't save? No, I did it. So, the, the Mahjong lady, first you have to win one game. Mm-hmm. And then you have to win a game with her special rule. And I did. I won a game with the special rule, but it was my first game. It doesn't carry over to the second one. So, I have to win oh. again, and the rule's actually very hard to win with. Especially when you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't what you're supposed... What people... uh, At least I think on the Reddit somebody said this. It's like, oh, what you do is you download a Mahjong app. That was for Shogi. That was for Shogi. Because Shogi, you can... You play what your opponent does and put the the app on the max. And then you do it like on the highest difficulty and you do the moves. But it's incredibly hard to like do it at the same time. Yeah. So you played Call of Duty. Yeah, that game is really... It, it's very fun to play. Yeah. I think Call of Duty is unfortunately AAA video game machine. Yeah. Has to be very like... Again, if you if you like that game, play fucking Titanfall 2. I have it. Yeah, I should. Yeah, it's I, really good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Do you like Call of Duty? Do you like Mirror's Edge? Do you like Big Robot? I like Apex Legends. <laughs> Yeah, do you Did like Apex it? Legends not have wall running in it? No, that's weird that they kept out some things. Yeah, because well, that's because the, what they were well, with Apex, what they were planning on doing was having a character that was a Titan pilot who could do the wall running and wall jumping. Oh, instead they put in the guy who was do who, the grenade lore man. Yeah, because they were like they were like okay, we'll have that be like just this character can do all the parkour stuff, and it's like. Then they tested it for balance, and they're like, "Oh, the person playing the person character with the parkour shit uh, is just winning literally every single game." Yeah, because it's completely unbalanced. Because it's, it's such a fucking important move set. The only way you can make it balanced is by being like, you can't shoot <laughs> yeah. on the wall. You have to actually be fully landed or something. Yeah, but like, but then it's like the way it works in Titanfall target. is like you can wall jump, you can double jump, you can power slide. Like I think they kept the power slide characters in Apex with Legends. Good mobility yeah. in like first person shooters. Shooter, yeah. Are it's the just best like, ones. oh, this character's harder to hit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, this character can take a lot of hits. But yeah, but I'm still hitting them. They're fucking huge. Yeah. But it's like, oh, uh, like you're playing Overwatch. It's like, yeah, I could beat the shit out of any tank, but if a fucking Genji comes near me, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Or Doomfist, which is also a big target, but if he hits me once and there's a wall nearby, yeah. I'm out. Well, especially because, like, what would the ultimate be for a, for a pilot? Be like, call down the Titan, and then that's fully OP. Yeah, it would have to be like Bob in fucking Overwatch, where there's a character named Ash, mm-hmm. and her ultimate is she just yells, Bob, do something. Yeah. And this giant robot wearing, like... The fucking mustache like that with a tiny bowler hat shows him. He has like a machine gun on his hand. He has like a thousand health. Yeah. And he just is like an auto turret. It's like getting another tank on your team. But yeah, everybody should play Titanfall 2. It has one of the best fucking FPS campaigns in a long time. Better than... uh, Okay, actually, it came out... It came after. But is it better than Call of Duty Black Ops 1? Yeah. Modern Warfare 1? Yes. Modern Warfare 2? Yes. Cool. No, it's oh. like story wise. Story wise, you could argue one way or another, but like, like, I really like the connection between him and BT. Like, that's a really like good story. They 
gave the robot a personality. Yeah, and they become friends over the course of the game. Mm-hmm. At first, they don't trust each other, and by the end, they love each other. Yeah. It's great. I had to fucking explain the difference between AI and VI to my mom, and she still didn't get it. What's VI? <laughs> virtual intelligence. Like Siri and OK Google is virtual oh. intelligence. Or an AI is like actually full like thoughts. Mm. Like uh, like that Titan. Edie in Mass Effect yeah. is supposed to be a VI, and then Shepard figures out pretty quickly that she's an AI because she has independent thought. Yeah. Because normally VIs, they have to be prompted to do it, where Edie would just be like, I have a suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> and they would be like, whenever they brought it in to like check, well, like because he gives the shit back to the good guys. Well, the government good guys. <laughs> yeah. But also not the good guys because government bad, military good. Mm hmm. Um, but, uh, what I was trying to say is, uh, Titanfall 2 has some of the best level design of any first person shooter. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Ooh, there was an awful map in the Black Ops beta right now, though. What is it? It's called Cartel. And yeah. it is, uh, you were, it's on like primarily on a farm. Mm-hmm. Like the center area of it is like a truck and like a raised farm, but there's bushes that you can run through. And you can be shot through. Like, it's not like they're walls or anything. But you, they're the same height as the fucking character. So you just can't see whoever's in them. Yeah. And that's just so annoying. Is there a rust slash shipment slash nuketown sized map? Uh, there is like a small map. I can't remember what it is, but there will be a nu- another nuketown. There always is. Yeah. There's been a nuketown in every single Black Ops. No, but what I mean is like that type of map where it's like a very small crowded map I'm because it's like fucking pandemonium. Right it's not cartel. Because that's what like Shipman and Rust were. Yeah, like, they're the 1v1 maps that sometimes yeah. accidentally had 12v12 game types get dumped on them. Which is always fun because it's the most chaos ever. Yeah, except for Shipman because Shipman was actually too small. Yeah. You well, Shipman, you can see characters fucking fully. You can like, you respawn. someone could spawn on top of you at yeah. the same time, so it would be like worthwhile to just spam knife as you're coming. I, out. Yeah, I was watching uh, my cousin uh, play the game uh, like a few weeks ago or whatever, and like he was playing Shipman, and he literally fucking saw two people spawn right in front of him at one point. Yeah. Like Jesus I don't Christ. think there is a Shipman or Nuketown in the game yet. There is actually uh, vehicle maps though. Yeah, they've had that for a couple yeah, years now. I, think. I just thought it was kind of cool. It's like it, you play on like three, uh, five ships. It's a do- five point domination map. It's like a 12v12. Yeah. And you can get on boats, jet skis to like move around. You can also swim between points. You can shoot actually while you're in the water. So it's like, it's not being in the water is not a death sentence in that level. Mm. It kind of is because they have the high ground. Yeah. And they can look down and head glitch you and shit. Pew. But yeah, seems like a very fun game. Yeah. I'm very much enjoying it. I always like the weapon, like the gunsmith system they put in. Yeah. Because before it was like, well, you had like three things you can put on, like a sight, a barrel, and like a stock or whatever. Yeah. Or like a magazine, shit like that. But now it's like you got five things. That's yeah. all to stick on there. My fucking sniper rifle glitched out though. Because <laughs> like the base scope was the best one. And I accidentally, and I put on like a different scope, thinking it was something else, because I was trying to put like a red dot on it for a close range map on the sniper. But then when I went back, it was like this. I had to when I disabled it, it was a different scope on it. I'm like, no, <laughs> it sucked. That sucks. Yeah, but then I eventually got it back. But cool. it was a good game. What'd you do this week? Uh, well, I watched Mobile Suit Gundam: The Origin, the anime. Did you watch that last week as well? Did no. Did you finish it? This- oh, I, you just started it. I just started it last week. Um, it's okay. six, Like I said, it's the six episodes, and they're all like an hour. Oh, yeah. And didn't you not have one of them or something? No, you had them all. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, how is it? How did it end? Did so, everyone die? No. So, Mobile Suit Gun of the Origin, in case you want to know, I'm also reading the manga of it. The anime is just a part that's a flashback, whereas the manga is the entirety of gundam 79 as a remake but there is an extended flashback in the middle of it um if you want to get into gundam but you don't want to watch gundam 79 i would recommend reading gundam the origin but gundam 79 isn't bad and i'd I'd recommend you give it a try but also you can read manga faster sometimes the manga is longer than the show but personally personally if say you use the age-old thing yeah one episode three chapters it's not. Two and a half to three. 
It, so this, it's like, uh, especially in like the first half of the manga, the chapters are really long. There are chapters that are more than one episode. How many pages? I don't know. Like, I don't know. There are there are chapters that I think go to like 50, 60 So I would pages. say that's three pages. That's three chapters. Because most chapters of a manga are usually 20 pages. So if there's 60 pages, three chapters. So if it, then would it be one chapter per episode? Regardless, I can read manga faster because I can speed read through scenes where it's nothing but exposition. I don't have to let, wait for people to talk. I can fucking look at a page and be yeah like, but it's cool. not and then go to the next page instead of having to hold on it for 10 <sighs> seconds i think yes but i think you would be doing the great art in this manga a disservice I'd by still, speed reading it i'm not I'd, i'm saying i'd speed read the exposition parts yeah i would flip to the page where it's like whoa cool ass art then i'd enjoy that and then I'd go through at the same time. But Ian, like, Gundam, the Gundam's a political, uh, a political thriller half the time. Like, and I'd be speed reading that part. <laughs> You'd be speed reading the most interesting part. I'm not saying I'm skimming. No, yeah. I'm just reading it fast. Yeah. I'm saying okay. If yeah. It was literally just like character faces with like a whole fucking wall of. Uh, of it's not like bubble. that. If it's, it was a it's, liberal it's... meme, I could just like stare at it, read through it. Sick. <laughs> yeah um but uh, i like the the comic a lot i like the show a lot let's talk about the origin the anime because god damn it is it so fucking good cool uh gundam the origin the anime tells the story of uh char char uh his real name castfall rem daikun uh at one point he goes by the name edward edward um uh, Moss, I God, think Mass. Crazy. Yeah. Well, it's hey man, Edward Edward Moss is just Spanish. Mm. Char Aznabal is a made up name. <laughs> uh, but uh, and then later he goes by Quattro Bagina, which is also Spanish. But that's the best one. Yeah. <laughs> Quattro Bagina. Yeah. Quattro Bagina. Eight legs. Um. But yeah, in in Gundam the Origin, we get to see him go from like being a kid to being like fully an adult, like right up to the beginning of the original show. Uh, it's really fucking cool. Some of the political intrigue stuff is great. There's like the so each one of the essentially movie length episodes does have like action in it, but we don't get to see like an actual mobile suit fight until like. I want to say episode four of six. Ew. Yeah. I can watch Gurren Logan for 20 minutes and get a fucking mech fight. Because that's not what this is about. This is about before even mobile suits exist a lot. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like world building, politics, that's drama. Dumb. It's really fucking cool. I just want to cool. see big robots. He stab play. a knight in the head with a sword. A real knight? Yeah. All right. Fine then. Um but like it's really cool. I I'd, I'd love to force Ian to watch it and not understand it because you it doesn't really explain me, anything. You don't watch anything I recommend. I watch half the stuff you recommend. I don't think so. I would say so. What did, what was the last thing I recommended that you watch? I watched the first couple episodes of uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Sorry about that one. <laughs> Um, that show is bad. I enjoy it, but that show sucks. Yeah, I read the, the fuck. Oh my god, the manga. Yeah. Oh, so rough. Also, I watched JoJo on your recommendation. Yeah, I, I watched right My one. Hero Academia on your recommendation. Still gonna say I'm right about that. One. Yeah, it just doesn't stay good, but it's a good show. I think it does. I just I disagree. They did something cool in the manga recently. Cool. Actually, I literally feel like the manga is about to end. Like it went from being like, hey, I watched, the- I watched Kill the Kill on your recommendation, and that's what got me into and anime. I'm right about that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a weird one. That and that Gurren Lagan. I think I like was you were at the time before Kill the Kill. I was yeah. like Nathan, you're gonna judge me on this, and yeah. but I swear you'll like it. And then after the first episode, you were like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I no, the first episode I was titties like this is fucking awesome. And fighting hype. It wasn't even the titties. The thing that first sold me was how the titles came up in the first episode. Yeah. It's well made. Just like with that like sort of Scott Pilgrim style 
Which I know is like intentionally an anime yeah, well, style, but like it feels cool. What was the last big thing Trigger did? Did they done anything since Promare? Promare is the most recent. Is it? Yeah, because that came out like late last year. So they gotta be. Oh, they're doing the cyberpunk anime. They're doing the cyberpunk. Yeah, so that's coming out soon. I think. Uh, and BNA. That's it. The best. Yeah. That's a good show. Yeah. Kind of. Mm. I told you to watch that show. Yeah, you did actually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, but it was on my list. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Watch this, you'll because like it. It's I, I for you." I saw that like a year before. Well, like, I, saw I saw the trailers. The, and I shit. did too. Yeah. yeah, but I was like, "Oh, oh, this wait, looks good." SSSS Gridman Trigger did, and that's a good show. I like it. It's all right. Um, it's very much like a, the type of show I don't like. I never like. I watched Power Rangers and shit as a kid. I loved Power Rangers. I wasn't that into it. I like Sentai. Yeah. I like fucking. I, I like kaiju <laughs> movies. Like. It's like, for me. I like some of the more like little comedic ground level shit that happens in Gridman. Like the guy who's just like tired with his hands in his pocket, but he has like the katana on his back. Yeah. The the scene he's introduced in, he keeps like forgetting that he has this whole wide ass plate. He keeps yeah. walking at the door and fucking hitting it. Yeah. yeah. That show's fun, man. The, fuck, the show I watched, like I watched Brand New Animal and then I went back with, uh, and, and while I was in Discord with Ben and Jacob, yeah. we fucking watched all of Darling and the Franks. <laughs> That's not even really Trigger. Halfway through, they don't even work on any yeah, of the episodes. Yeah, it's Cloverworks. <laughs> yeah. But like, it was... Bef- I, saw, yeah. I just saw something on Tumblr today about it's... Uh, it was all the scenes from like... Uh, from Darling and the Franks. It's just like, what's so wrong with being in love and having a baby together? <laughs> and it's just like... A, <laughs> like transparent Shinzo Abe <laughs> like face over it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone knows because we definitely talked about it. Shinzo Abe was his whole career goal was to get Japanese men to fuck women. Yeah, and Darling in the Franks was like a hail mary. Same and, with the one about raising a kid, Sweetness and Light Night. That's like yeah, but that's like a dad. That's like them being like, hey, even if you have a kid with a woman and she leaves you, it's still fulfilling to be a father. Yeah. Um... What was okay, I so say? this was this is what I first saw. It's she says, "Well, I read that a boy and a girl can create a new life by joining their bodies together." But then someone just fucking put Shinzo Abe right there, <laughs> and then there's a bunch more where it's like, "I want to make a baby." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then someone wrote, wrote this whole like write up about like they're very fascinated about this, and it's because mm-hmm. uh, the last time there was a big baby boom in Japan. Yeah. Um. The people who are products of that gen- that generation are all the like, lost generation. Yeah, yeah, they're like disenfranchised. They still live with their parents because they just yeah. couldn't do anything. Well, it was right when the bubble popped, and then yeah. jobs were like nowhere. And then, like they, even though they're still incredibly qualified, now they're not looking for yeah older people. They're looking for young people that they can invest in the company, and they had to work like convenience store jobs or take over the family restaurant. But the family wanted them to grow up and become like fucking. Like things. That's where neats came from, but then they yeah. never like, they never. It's all mostly men. Yeah, because the women would just go and marry the older men. Yeah, that had the jobs and had the money because that because Japan's very classist. Yeah, but it's just like incredibly sad. But because there's gonna be all these elderly people who have like no children to take care of them, like they can't work, and the young generation isn't that is is like now they're fucking more. But the population is going to get to a point where there's going to be like a 30 year gap. Yeah. Between like, or there's going to be jobs where you just can't, like, people, there's no, no yeah. one with experience going to be able to train people. Yeah. There's and like, that's why Shinzo Abe was trying so hard to create make a population fun. boom with even o- with offering like credits, like yeah. free date, health, like date, baby health care and shit, put like money into like that system. Yeah. But the real problem is, is that he's not combating the capitalism. <laughs> Yeah. Is where companies have like work fucking 40 hours extra every week because you live and die for this company. And it's like, yeah. well, why would you want to be a parent if you literally could never spend time with your children? Or like, like yeah. I pay money to a woman and a child that I don't get to see. <laughs> it's like being a divorced dad, except your wife still loves you. <laughs> Maybe. She might. Well, she won't. Well, if she was smart and understood yeah. the system, not. But if she might. Can you truly love it. somebody if you see them less than 10 hours a week? I see you less than 10 hours a week. That's not even true. What do you mean? Well, I talk to you on the thing. We're in 10 hours a week. 
Oh, yeah. Well, maybe you think so because you have to listen to this over and over again. No, but we also talk on Facebook. Talk to my dad for and we text. Of the week. You send memes to each other. All right, yeah. fine. Send I sent you that memes. picture of the of the guy where it's like feminism is the reason why girls won't date me yeah. part two and of 19 also, i found out why you sent me that is because that was a dude that trump recently reblogged yeah retweeted yeah so anyway. but i just thought the picture on its own was funny japan is literally that fucking like image from the eric andre show <laughs> where it's like shinzo abe shooting boom, like boom 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 uh, boom <laughs> fertility rates or whatever the fuck yeah. and they're going why is the younger generation doing this yeah so yeah he also put a lot of money into anime and video games to like try and be like hey look have a it's also a major export have kids yeah yeah it's it's a major export to, but like it's just not gonna work hey man yoko taro has a an attractive wife so you can too yeah but his yeah. face looked like that <laughs> that's mean <laughs> harvey weinstein has fucked hey, attractive no. women <laughs> no no, Why I said Yoko, Yoko Taro is because nice of the the face, the mask thing. Because um, he wears the mask, the, the oh, meal head. Maria Takeuchi has a uh, uh, is kind of, it's sixty five and still looks amazing. Yeah. Her husband does not. Uh, what I was gonna say though about Darling in the Franks, <laughs> don't is, I don't know do who you? that is. Maria Takeuchi did the song "Plastic Love" that you've definitely oh, heard. Oh, I know that. Yeah, and yeah. She pioneered the the city pop genre in Japan in like the eighties, and her husband. Tatsuro uh, Yamashita, who you've definitely heard one of his songs. He does a song called like Magic Ways. You've probably know. heard it, but it's like probably a meme song for you. Okay. It's very good. It's very jammy. <laughs> like it's a vibe. But they got married and just like made this genre huge. And there's just no way he looks as good as her. She's like yeah. 65 and still like looks 20. Oh, yeah. Uh, what I was going to say about Darling in the Franks is yeah. like. You man, you could really see the massive fucking quality gap between Cloverworks when they were owned by A1 and Cloverworks when they went independent. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, Persona 5 and Darling in the Franks like trash tier. It doesn't look that bad, but still like yeah, he looks okay. Yeah. It's that it's the receding it's the hairline hair. with it's the It's the hair, hair for yeah. me. Um but no, uh but Cloverworks the second they went independent, they do fucking Promised Le- Neverland, which is a fucking gorgeous show. The season two of that comes out in January. Some modern... That's like a recent picture of Maria Takeuchi. She's very pretty. Yeah. Also, great voice. Yeah. Uh, Cloverworks now is doing good work. But yeah, uh, Gundam The Origin super cool. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad you have something to focus on right now. Yeah. Because I ran I'm, out of my thing to focus on. Then I'm going to watch fucking 0080 and uh, is that 08 MS team. How would you feel about taking a... Th- 60 minute long break sure not right now okay not for the podcast but between your gundam watching because this week i watched through burn the witch okay which is tight kubo tite kubo yeah bleach man yeah his newer series it is fantastic the Mm -hmm. animation is gorgeous but that's also because it's three episodes hell yeah it is a fun world Unfortunately, there is a pervert character. Oh, but in the in the in the one shot for the manga that he did like a year ago, before he did the four shot, was like that was the whole thing. Is the character was a pervert, and everyone's like, "This dude kind of sucks." Yeah, <laughs> and he's still there. He is like a main character, but it, the pervertness doesn't come up until the final episode, and it's like for a joke. Okay. And it's because he has a little pet dog. It's like a little Pomeranian. Yeah. <laughs> that has like dragon wings. Because they get him and the dog get attacked by a dragon. And the dragon like... The dog like takes in some dragon energy and like lives. But now it has little dragon wings and can kind of speak. But it like works like a parrot. So okay. the, so at the very end... the Something like... Balgo almost died. And she and Noel, the main character, like the main main character, was like, "Damn, homie, I'm super glad that you're alive because I kind of care for you a little bit." And then the dog is just like in between them, and just in its like little dog parrot voice goes, "Show me your panties," and it's like, "Great!" And then she just runs around trying to kill him because <laughs> that's what you deserve when you're a pervert. Yep. But show's very fun. It's very interesting. If there's whole like so much setup. Yeah. With, like very interesting ideas about how the world works. And they get through the entire show in three? It's like one arc. 
it's well it's like one big fight okay and it's like man i really want there to be more of this but i don't want tight kubo to write it yeah or else i'm just gonna watch the same fucking the, thing the same thing bleach. three times oh, like three times just like bleach where it's save rukia save orihime <laughs> Save next character. Well, it's. I think what that means is that Tite Kubo, give him just a short amount of time. Let him be done before he gets bored. Yeah, or let him do the character outline. Let him yeah. design the characters. Let him make decisions about the world, but have another writer there to be like, yeah. maybe we should make this more concise, or maybe let's... Uh, yeah, maybe Tite Kubo should do it like they do Death Note, where it's a, a writer-artist team. Yeah, that's a lot of good manga do, does that now. Yeah. Like fucking Blue Exorcist, it's a, it's the artist and there's the writer. Mm-hmm. It makes and him, Promise Neverland yeah. and Doctor Stone. Yeah, because we've seen like when the show goes on for too long, it gets bad. Yeah, <laughs> Boruto. <laughs> I mean the entire. I'm franchise. not gonna say One Piece, but One Piece does take too long to get to where it's going. Yeah, and like Bleach was just a man burned out for yeah, so I, long. Well, I mean you can see that in in Naruto too. Yeah. Naruto is the one you can actually truly see it. Yeah. Did you watch Eye Patch Wolf's newer uh, Bleach video? Not his newer one. It's very good and it kind of like it, some of the things he said about Bleach back in the day was just kind of wrong and just him claiming things like him saying that his penmanship or whatever yeah. got worse. It's more like it just got more fl- like concise. Okay. Yeah, but like his problem is in character writing, where it's like here's all these character designs. It's like I don't care. Yeah. Because he talks about how the Soul Society arc, they introduce you to the Gotai 13, like the, all the captains. It's like, cool, here's interesting things about every single one of these characters. And in 65, from episode one to 65 of Bleach, that's the entire, like, Ichigo becoming a Reaper and the Soul Society arc. Like, you save Rukia in episode 65. Mm-hmm. And then we get the Arankar shit. And that's 200 episodes. <laughs> It's like, wow, yeah, that's bad. And so much filler in between. I think Kubo needs to be on that fucking Hirohiko Araki shit. Yeah. <laughs> One chapter a month. Yeah. Like 40 pages. And like, te- like technically you're doing more work for one chapter but, but less work like over the whole less month less work over the month like you have you could work four hours a day and like do like three pages yeah I mean like Araki that. Araki did the week he did weekly until the end of part six yeah and then part seven it went to wait I think jump. yeah I think part seven the first few chapters of it the first like five ten chapters of it were weekly and then it became monthly when it moved to ultra jump Maybe, because I remember there was a point where it's like, wow, why are the chapters like 50 pages long? Yeah. Yeah. I think for the first like quarter of it, maybe a little bit less. All the designs are very sleek. All the powers are very interesting. And like... Cool. Yeah, maybe I'll check it out. What's it on? Crunchyroll. Okay. Also, steal it. Yeah. (laughs) Actually, oh, you know what? It's a Crunchyroll production. Oh. Like they funded part of it. Like in the credits, it just says Crunchyroll. I saw people... Man, people, fucking anime fans are annoying sometimes. What? What they do next people time? People are like, fucking Crunchyroll spent all this money to make these three original shows, and they're all bad, and they're talking, it's like God of High School, Burn the Witch, and one other one. God of High School is like a top-tier anime right yeah, now. Yeah, people are like, this, I was like, everybody's telling me it's really good, except like it's a bit too, like, That was also an iPad Wolf's newest video. Yeah, like, I, all I heard, the only thing I've heard about it is like, yeah, the pacing's a little rough it's a, it's partway a, through. But also, but like, like God of High School has been around for a long time. When I was working at Walmart, one of yeah. the guys I worked with it came in and he was like, you watch anime? And I'm like, yeah. And we used to talk about anime a lot at my job. Like yeah. everyone on my crew. Well, but it was a webtoon. Yeah, like, it, it was, was a webtoon. A- and I was like, I don't really, I watch anime. I don't really read manga, which is the opposite now. I, watch, yeah. I read more manga than anime than watch anime. So he just says like, you should check out God of High School. That was like seven years ago. Yeah. So in, who knows? Maybe God of High School is still going on. Yeah. Maybe it's just, Poor pacing because it was a webtoon, which I don't know if you guys know what webtoon is. It's usually self-published. Yeah. The pacing is going to be all over the place because they don't have an editor. So if you think the show is good with no supervision, yeah. imagine how good it's going to be in like season two or three. Like from, I think from what I've heard, it's like, it's a 12 episode season and like, it just escalates kind of fast. Like yeah, the well, pacing's like the pacing's bad in that way. I was like, I was, like it's not slow. It's I short. I this video where he recommends it. Yeah. He says it starts and it's like, what's the main character's power? He's very fucking good at like 
fighting. I can't remember what he actually says. He's, yeah, he's martial like, arts. He's just a straight up fist man. Yeah, and it's like, but, but it starts. It's like, it's like oh, we're doing then, tournaments, fighting people, and yeah. at the end, it's like and now one we're dude's like God. his fighting style is that he just sh- summons a shark. Yeah, it, like like the people are like it kind of gets from it gets from like early Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z within twelve episodes, and then uh, I think it would go from early. Dra- it's probably like because it's two tournaments over twelve episodes. Yeah, it's probably the first tournament is like starts Dragon Ball. Ends it ends mid Dragon Ball Z, and then the final part is just Dragon Ball Super because I saw yeah. those powers and they're stupid. No, but it's not even like it stops really being tournaments. It starts being for the fate Crunchy of Roll the also Earth. Also, did shit for um, Doctor Stone. Yeah, well, like people meant like full Crunchyroll originals or whatever. Oh yeah, Doctor Stone was just something they paid like a they lot paid for. part of money yeah, yeah. for. But, but yeah, uh, Crunchyroll they their own the bad thing they do is not paying their translators. Yeah, like people are people are dumb, and also people were talking about that like. Um, I don't know if it's Adult Swim or it's on a different channel, but there's this uh, this show called like Magical Princess something. Like it's an American show. It's like an adult eighteen plus comedy uh-huh. show, and people are like, "Fucking people got oh, paid to make Fly this to ugly moon. shit, huh?" Fly me to the moon. The show. Yeah, Tony Kawa Kawaii, which I read. I read the manga for. Is it good? It's cute. It's cool. a cute slice of life show about a guy when he is sixteen. He is he a, wants to be an astronaut, right? Yeah, he's a cocky piece of shit. Okay. I told you about this a long time ago. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. he like sees a girl who he thinks is so cute. He goes to walk across the road and gets hit by a truck. But as he's about to get hit, the girl jumps out and saves him. And yeah. then on broken legs, like on pure adrenaline, he chases after her and says, "You, I love you." <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, "You're hit, you're like loopy." And he's like, "No, you're the cutest woman I've ever seen." Oh yeah. Turns out, I know you don't like this part. Siblings. Uh, no, she. He's sixteen at this point. She's fourteen. So then, two years pass. She is sixteen. He's eighteen. He he dropped out of high school, but he's like still very smart. Mm-hmm. Like the whole thing is that he's just like this weird dude who do, who does nothing but odd jobs, and he has like a hundred thousand dollars at the age of eighteen just sitting in his bank account. But like that's like yeah. a little. But it's not about them struggling it's just about like a young it's almost shinzo abe shit <laughs> like like that i like young couple show don't get me wrong and, and 18 and 60 that's not a huge age gap 16 to 14 is bad 18 to 16 is not. less bad like it's not that bad i i dated a girl who was 16 when i was 18 yeah because i met her at my high school she but she shows up at his door when i either he just turned 18 or she turned just turned 16 or whatever yeah because you know japan marriage laws Yep. And she shows up and with a suitcase and says, hello, <laughs> time to go get married. Oh, she says that she'll only date him after when she walks away, if she, he agrees to marry her. And then she disappears for two years and then just shows up on his doorstep. Cool. And it's like, they're both kind of big weirdos. That but, sounds enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a slice of not life. To, yeah, not to get deep down into it, but yeah. Yeah. It's a slice of life show. It's cute. Yeah. Cool. So anyways, Crunchyroll, just let them, the, yeah. it's their money. <laughs> yeah, the, the, Pay your translators more, but also keep yeah. doing those originals. The magical girl thing that people were mad about, though, like magical mm-hmm. princess, it's like an adult swim show or yeah. something like that. And like people are like, people got paid to make this shit. It, like, because like, there was a, a an episode where a bunch of, because it's a commentary on modern day and it's obviously it's, it's adult swim or whatever. So it's usually really young writing team. Um, and like a bunch of dudes show up like in shirts that say like, you know, Pepe and they're supposed to be like fucking right wing people because it's a, it's a joke comedy show with that and people are pissed at it. It's not adult swim. What is it? It's sci-fi. Sci-fi? Yeah. It's spelled like, you know how it's spelled. Yeah. But it says it's an adult. <laughs> adult it's an adult cartoon. Yeah. Teasy jeezy animation blog. I guess maybe because they have an anime like a cartoon block on sci-fi now yeah um it's this wacky new series is basically a love letter to sailor moon card captor captor sakura and various other examples of the magical girl anime subgenre um <laughs> yeah i don't know like i don't see what's so bad about this is it just because it's like women being like wow I hate these four channers. Yeah, I think that might be it. They were like, it looks so ugly, and it's like it's an it's American. No, it looks fine. That doesn't look yeah, that bad. It looks fine. People are dumb. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 
This fucking red panda looks stupid, though. Sure. But, the, you know, there's always, like, a cute animal sidekick for yeah. everything. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, the thing you told me to put off saying was just that I'm going to start other shows. <laughs> the other Gundam shows that oh, I bought. what do you mean put off saying? At the like, beginning? you were like, oh, can you wait 16 minutes before you say that? <laughs> Because I'm going to talk about. Oh, anime I said I, I said sixty minutes because Burn the Witch is like sixty minutes long. Oh, yeah. So put off like finish Gundam. Okay. Go check out Burn the Witch. Oh yeah. And you were going to watch other anime anyways. Might as yeah. well. Yeah. But yeah, these these ones look cool. Yeah. That I have. That? Well, one of them's a Gundam one. They're both Gundam. So are I'm you getting putting those in. off and watching something else. These are, are the ones I'm I'm saying that I'm going to watch next. But they, after it's still Origin. Gundam. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. Because it's like, but this one's War in the Pocket, which is about a kid who's like obsessed with, with mobile suits. I finished another. What else? <laughs> another anime this week. What other show? Rental Girlfriend. Rent a Girlfriend. Uh, all right. Well, this week I played. Yeah, you can skip that. Actually, <laughs> It is, um, honestly, by the end, I was groaning so hard. Like before it was like, yeah, fuck these people. I just want to see their them be put in horrible situations but then uh, by the end of it i'm like i hate all of you <laughs> yeah you're really pushing for a romance between a 21 year old and i don't know how old she is in high school but she is in high school so that's not cool that's pretty not good but it's like the high school girl's the one who likes him so but it's like whatever fuck off wait i thought he he's the girl he's dating the rent the rent a girlfriend is he's, he's paying a woman money to date him yes because he was sad because his girl, his other girlfriend broke up with him. So it's more, it's kind of like the dude who's like, my girlfriend left me. Look at this girl's OnlyFans. I'm going to go check that out. Except yeah. a real life version of it. Yeah. And then he gets, but then he thinks like, you know. So it's, it's more it's, like somebody. But who, then it becomes some incel shit where she, where he finds out that the way she went through hit the date is exactly how she goes through every other date. And he gets mad where it's like, she should only be doing this for me. It's like, that's not how sex work works, bro. Yeah. Like that she's. She's it's, essentially a high class escort. It's like a, it's a escort it's like pretty that, woman. It's an escort that doesn't fuck you. Honestly, sounds like a ripoff. Tba. Yeah, <laughs> but you know how Japanese men are—they just want someone to hold their hand. Yeah, and say that their hobbies are interesting and they're not boring. <laughs> so he gets mad. Does he fall in love with the the prostitute girl? Yeah, but it's also like she's kind of getting into him as well because yeah, well that's what he, I mean. Yeah, it's pretty woman. Yeah, but but then so in the middle another girl shows up. She's like a high schooler. And she's doing a it. high schooler. Yeah, but and he then dates her? she goes on a date. Her his buddy goes on a date with her, and the, like takes her, and then she says, then they find out that she's a rent a girlfriend sort of thing. But then she he does the she has this like heart condition or whatever, where she constantly tracks her BPM, and like if her heart races too much, she'll pass out. And the main character makes her heart race just the right amount. That she like can feel like the sensation. God, this is dumb. It's so stupid. But if she's like, I, you're gonna be my boyfriend, or else I'm gonna tell everyone. I'm like, cool, blackmail. That's a great way to start a relationship. It's a great way to but start then, a relationship. You know, it's kind of like they're just kind of going through the motions, and it's like we, you don't hate this girl. She kind of just. Is it sad that the I last like actual the good romance that I remember watching is Bunny Girl Senpai? That's a good show. <laughs> yeah, but like it's. That shouldn't be the last good one that I've That was I've like seen. last year, wasn't it? That was it? like two years. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I think the movie came out last year. Yeah. Yeah, so... But then... It just goes through all this shit. Like, they get... Where it's like, the uh, the, the girlfriend... The first rent-to-girlfriend is like, we're just a rent thing. It's not... This is all business. We just got caught in something... Like, I feel like a, I get... In a lie. I get the gist. But then, like, at the end, it sounds like he's gonna just go ask out the blue-haired high schooler and be like, let's just... Me and you. Let's but they end up... He it. ends up with the adult woman, no, right? No, they don't, because that's where the show ends, because there's a season two. <sighs> Not out yet, obviously, but it's like, the show was successful enough that they didn't have to end it. Do you know what's weird? They're doing a season two of The Fucking Vow. The Vow? I don't know The what Vow? That uh, it's a, it's a show that's on Crave... It's a docudrama about Nexium, the Keith Raniere's cult, cult, the sex cult. I don't know that one. Nexium? Uh, yeah, I don't know it. It's, okay. Watch The Vow. It's a good show, but... Mm. Or Anyways, just Google Nexium. So Nexium. why is it weird that there's a second season? Is it's it's like a true crime. Like, it's, like a, it's true crime. Like Why would you write it with multiple seasons? It's maybe like, they're going to focus on other things that are similar or like a follow. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully it would be a different cult they go to and isn't like... We managed to get all this more footage of the cult doing cult shit. Well, it could be like 
Well, uh, well, I guess it's a documentary. They would have already done the Fallout, like, in the yeah. original. Yeah, in so the... maybe they'll go to a different sex cult. Or, like, in- imitation cults that popped up. Maybe. But Nexium's recent. Like, Nexium happened within the last three years. Hmm. So then there's definitely imitations that rose and failed that, like, were called yeah, out or, like, were stopped by the government. And then they could go and talk to those people. Sure. Yeah. So. you got to look up the next. You could do show. more. It's cool. Yeah. And by cool, I mean awful and disgusting, it's still odd but interesting. That it's just they're saying it's a second season. The girl from the girl from Smallville was in Nexium. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. She was horrible. Mm. She bad. was really bad. They branded women. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why did that come up? <laughs> Because uh, you said they're making a second season of Rent a Girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Well, there's 156 chapters of the manga. So, like, they have shit to work with still. Also, I played like five minutes of the game. It can fell. What's that? Uh, it's like a tactical RPG. It's on Steam. Uh huh. It's pretty cool. It's like a like a Harry Potter vibe, but like it's actually got there are trans characters in it. That's good. Yeah. It's like a magic school vibe, but there's like, yeah. I watched another anime. <laughs> An entire show? No, no, we started it. What? Domestic Girlfriend. Uh, You know what? I was thinking of a different show the second you said that. Yeah. So this show is about a guy who had a crush. He has a crush on his... Oh, that is, hold on. This is the show where he lives with a girl and he browbeats her into loving him. No. I have not watched enough. But, well, okay, so what it is, is he has a crush on his high school teacher, and then he's, like, bummed because she is an old... She, he's 17 and she's uh, 24. Her... He fucks a girl and it's her sister. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes to a mixer with his friends, and there's this, like, the a blue-haired girl, and she's, like, all quiet and shit. So then, like, she leaves, and he goes to talk to her and be like, oh, whatever... And then she just goes like, hey, you want to get out of here? And she takes him back to her home and then just starts getting undressed. She's like, I just want to fuck. I'm just curious. Let's just do this. I just want to know what it's like and I'll never see you again in my life. The browbeating one is the is is how to how to train a boring girlfriend or how to raise a boring girlfriend or make a boring girlfriend. That sucks. Um, yeah. But so they fuck and he's like damn that's cool that that happened I guess I'll head out and then his and dad And then his dad, his dad marries says, the teacher. His, no no. Oh, that his dad be... marries the teacher's mom. Yeah and then, and then they show both, up they and she's like in. oh my god my student. Oh this is so cool we already know each other that's sick and then he's like but he's like looking he's like yeah. At the sister. He just banged. Also, he was like, thought she was cute because she looked like the teacher. <laughs> it's like, wow, I wonder why. Sibling. But then the um, the whole thing is he like finds out that she's like kind of in this abusive, like the teacher. Yeah. He's trying to white knight her because she's in like some shitty relationship. But then he kind of figures out that it's with a man who's already married. So he's like, you know, but he like straight up just forces, like starts trying to kiss her. And then she just like goes at him super hard. As like you know, an adult woman and a child, a, a child who could become a man at any time, but still is a child right now. You fucking weirdo. So they're just like immediately dating. Like there's no problem with it. No, they're not dating. It's that she like tries to intimidate him into like don't try and push on me because I know exactly how I can make you come super hard. <laughs> like he's pretty much saying you. I'm a grown woman. But then she goes about it in a weird way. Uh, that's such like, a weird vibe. Yeah. But, I, I feel like that's a bad show, maybe. But then it's she finds out from the other... Uh, so he runs away for a couple days. He goes and stays at his friend's house because it was just like he's so embarrassed and like he thinks it's kind of gross what he did because he forced he initially forced himself on her. Mm-hmm. And then the other one runs away as well, finds him, and then they have a conversation and she knows about the affair that her sister's having and they want to just kind of like convince her to stop. But then that's where we stopped watching because we decided to watch Burn the Witch instead because this show was not as interesting as Rent a Girlfriend. Like, Rent a Girlfriend is a lot more fun to watch. This show is just kind of slow, but there's a part coming up, I know later on, where the blue the teacher finds out that they banged and she, like, goes into her room. She's like, you can't do that. We're siblings. She's like, it's not like we're blood related. And I'm like, oh, God, Japan, you are wild. Yeah. 
it's like we you know you hate watch things sometimes especially when yeah. you're with your friends Oh, wow, Ian. Do you remember recently on the podcast when you said, I don't get people hate watching things? I honestly don't hate it. The last thing I hate watched was Darling and the Franks, but I still get some enjoyment out of it. Like, yeah. there's still some entertaining parts. Like, there's this running animation at the so beginning. So people of feel that way about your dumb uh, big tit girl look like a child anime. I don't. People feel the and same way about that like show. There. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wish we weren't talking about this. Hey, you started it. I did. You're right. Um, I don't know. I don't get it sometimes. Like, I get some enjoyment out of these shows. Yeah. But then there's people who like watch things and see the whole time. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna hate watch something that's just absolute garbage, I would highly recommend. Darling and Franks. No, <laughs> worse. I've seen both shows. This one's worse. And more trash and more entertainingly trash. If this is a show I like, I'm gonna be upset. Aromaga Sensei. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That show sucks. Yeah. Or um, the other one. It's like Aromaga Sensei. Oh, it's it's. I can't believe my little yeah. sister's this cute. And he ends up with her at the end. Yeah. And like, I think that one that like Aromaga Sensei. It's like they're not like it's a stepchild. It's a stepsister sort of thing. I believe in the other one they're straight up related yeah they're blood relatives yeah the shinzo abe fun you, fact you missed the mark it's not there. shinzo abe the, fun fact Aromanga sensei and ore ime it's the same show people isn't it? it's the same writer who after the oh. sister watched his anime stop talking to him oh, his yeah. re- real life sister because i think she like went back and like into her own psyche and was like oh my god I think Ore Ime is like kind of actually close to their real life. Yeah, but like I think she like said it's like yeah, um, no he would now I realize he was very creepy to me while I was growing up. Yeah, yeah. Or no, it's Ore Emo, obviously because of Emoto, my Emoto. It's O R E I M O. So yeah. like say it however you want. Ore Emo. Who cares? Ore Emo. Who cares? Yeah. Uh. But yeah, Ian. How do you feel about your little sister? I don't have one. I can't believe Ian's little sister could be this cute. I don't have one. <laughs> I have a dog. <laughs> I can't believe I Ian's two dog older could sisters. be this cute. I have two older sisters, and they're both over the age of 25, so... It's not gross like how other things are. What? Oh, like no, I was going to say, sensei. so they're no longer viable, just like how Japan believes. <laughs> Remember, if you're over the age of 25, you are now garbage. Christmas cake. <laughs> Christmas cake. Damn, I'd love me some Christmas cakes, though. Hell yeah. Like, uh, if you show me a woman who is 27 and does not have her life together, I'm like, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel better about myself. Yeah. Also, she probably has low standards at this point. <laughs> or extremely high standards. Oh, yeah. But or specifically we're... high standards. Yeah. Yeah. Can't come up with any good jokes for this. Big dicks only. Oh. All right, bye. Or just like good at eating people out only. Oh. It's not a bit. That's not that high of a standard. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like a. We should all be there. Not all of us are, but that's because the world allows men to be mediocre. Yeah. Especially with dudes who will be like, ew, no. Anyways, suck my smeg my coated dick. <laughs> Bro, I won't. I won't go anywhere near that unless she makes that smell like whatever <laughs> something else. It isn't. Anyways, here's my. Anyway, I've never shaved in my entire life. I've never shaved, and I've never pulled back my foreskin for hygienic purposes. I don't know what that is because I'm this. <laughs> this must be. A, this must be a foreskin joke. I'm too circumcised to understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but regard well. Imagine if you just didn't, like, touch your shit to clean it. You were just, like, yeah. like you took, like, a loofah or a bar of soap, and you just, like, pfft, and just that it. You didn't get in there. You didn't scrub her? You didn't scrub under the balls? Yeah. Oh, God, that's even worse. I didn't even think about that. Scrub the taint. Like, obviously, she doesn't have to put her actual mouth there unless she's your going Your nose your is ass. pretty close. Yeah, but I'm saying everything's pretty close. Yeah. Things pull over. Yeah. It's got, like, that... Ugh, yep. That yellow crust... Maybe they don't wear deodorant either, man. I'll, I'm uh, glad I'm not a. Woman. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not uh, that I um I'm not so uh, homophobic that I'm like, I'm, what do you mean? I'm not wiping my ass. Who? I don't get it. I truly don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I've walked around. Like, with like I understand oh. if you're homophobic, you're like I'd never use a bidet, but like, not even wipe. 
I don't even get a bidet because it's not like it penetrates you. <laughs> well, it blasts you in the yeah, ass. I want a bidet. I want a bidet. Sounds like it would. I used one it. once on vacation, and it was great. I never used one. Um, because also, aren't the wasn't the thing with bidet where it's like, oh, it's cold water, but isn't there like you can one, set it? There's it's like heating setting. segment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I'll get one for the new house. Yeah, just get one that locks onto the fucking toilet. And yeah. Just get, Blast you in the ass. Well, or it's like you just like you take off the toilet seat and you fucking put it under and you can yeah. just take the pipe off. It's not hard. You have to hook it into the water. And yeah, but also pull, pull, it's yeah. it's like a joint that you have that will like you just put it. You yeah. unhook the fucking toilet thing. Yeah. You put the joint on that mm-hmm. goes with the water tube to the bidet. And then that you're yeah. good. Whatever. <laughs> Stop being a pussy. <laughs> and then you. And yeah. Then you get that that. Right in the pucker. Yeah. And I would probably, I would still probably use toilet paper just to like, yeah, dry my ass. Yeah. But instead of being like, well, well you're supposed that to, was a particularly bad shit. You're supposed to wipe just to get like the big chonkers off uh-huh. and then bidet and then wipe to dry. So it's like you take like, depending on how thick. You still like, use a fraction of the TP. Yeah. Because you're basically just wiping I don't, twice. I don't even use that much TP. Because I'm going to wipe my hands. I'm going to wash my hands regardless. I'm not that scared. Well, it's not, it's not that I'm using tons. It's that, like, you know, you wipe until there's none left. I do one through. I do. Okay, then I definitely use more than you. I, like, go through. I, like, fucking take as much as I can. You take I a little bit. I don't actually have that much left over. You take much. a little bit. You wipe, you wipe until there's no more poop on the That's toilet paper. That's just putting more... Okay, one second. Are you taking the same bit of toilet paper? No, I, I use multiple ones. Like, is it ones, through, to... and then you, like, and then you're, like... Go back? <laughs> no, you okay. drop it. It's uh, what it you makes... keep taking them okay. until there's no. Po- what it, you made it sound like is that you were going like, okay, out, in, out, in. <laughs> it's like you're just spreading it. No, I mean yeah. like you do multiple. Yeah. Until there's no poop on the toilet anyway, paper. Just put a finger in your ass. <laughs> yeah. At when after. Oh, you know what? Make sure I you fucking don't need the shit recently. If you want to know what kind of person I am, I told this story at Thanksgiving to my uncle. But nice. I'm uh, sure it went not over this well. This story. But a different story. Yeah. Which was, did you hear this this recent Florida man story? No, what is it? Okay, Florida yeah, man. But go on. Florida man after his prostate exam, or during his prostate exam, his, his doctor made him come. Uh, and then he came back later and shot the doctor to death. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. Fellas, is it gay to come when your prostate is rough? Fellas, it. Oh. Bro, I'm sorry. You're into butt play. <laughs> no, every man's G spot is in there. No, but Just I mean, like, you, you know, it's it can always feel good to have it. But, like, if you literally, like, if your doctor, as a doctor, just like, okay, felt it, and you went, oh, and fucking <laughs> shot rope all over his goddamn, um, <laughs> like, you examination table. I'm throwing, sorry. Throwing ropes in the doctor's I'm office. I'm sorry you like it when people put a finger in your ass. Yeah. Just accept it. It's not... You You don't like... Again. You might also be gay because that was a man's finger. But like... It's not. I guess, yeah. First time simulation or something. Yeah. Again, that's where it is for every man. Yeah. Those kids that Michael Jackson sucked off weren't gay. <laughs> All right, yeah. But they were just like, yeah. <laughs> they were is... being assaulted. Yeah, but it was also a new sensation is what I'm saying. Like a man who's gotten a blowjob from a woman before probably won't. Actually, probably still would, but it might take longer. Okay. Anyway. Like a, pure, like a straight man. <laughs> if he was like, yeah, my wife sucks me off. And some gay dude was like, but have you ever had another dude do it? And he's like, you know what? Maybe probably I'm be not identical. that straight. Probably be the exact same. Well, what if he had a, mu- a beard? Then it would be slightly different. Yeah. Well, women can have beard. mustaches, Ian. Oh, yeah, you're right. They can. Yeah. But still, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a, wo- a woman, even if she grew out. Actually, no. I haven't seen a woman in real life, but I know they exist. They can yeah. have a big beard. <laughs> yeah. Bearded women existed, I swear. That's true. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, let's get the hell out of this yeah, podcast. I'm going to go Thanks for. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening folks if you want to follow the podcast youtube.com slash n8s comedy if you want to follow me i'm at the media hole on twitter at the media hole on tiktok uh twitch.tv slash the media hole and when your balls get stuck to your leg dot tumblr.com change your name uh if you want to find ian he's 
at struggles v on practically everything and uh yeah follow my twitch stream so i can fuck and just donate i'm not gonna stream but just donate to me please so i can buy characters in genshin impact like every other fucking youtuber oh yeah i was gonna talk about genshin impact it's only okay um that's fine i like it uh i know you were complaining about the progression wall thing yesterday i wasn't complaining about it i was just say, stating you got it there as and a you're fact. like yep it's there yep did you uh, okay one second sorry <laughs> i know we're in the middle of finishing it up okay. i forgot to ask you yesterday did you get the adventurer's handbook yet i don't remember Go talk next. If you ever feel like playing again, go talk to the lady who gives you rewards for adventure ranks. Oh yeah, I need to. I talked to her like once. If you yeah, so it's weird. She'll talk to you if you the first time she has like set amounts of times you can talk to her and shit. But at some point she'll give you the adventurer's handbook, which has like little challenges you can do. They're like, but they're, if the yeah. it's like shit you if you've already done it. It like looks through your game progress. It's not like it, it won't be some shit where it's like go donate to one of the statues that like gives you power and shit. It wouldn't just be like, all right, cool, go do it again because you did but it yeah. before you had the book. Sure, but yeah, if you want to find Ian, like I said, at Struggles V on anything, he's very recently con- come under fire because of how much he hates skill ba- based matchmaking. Can we, uh, you know, I very much <laughs> love skill based matchmaking. Ian, you know I come up with some kind of social media controversy for you to be a part of yeah, every Yeah, I know, week. but that's the one I'm very much, for, like, against. I mean, for, I love, skill-based matchmaking is the best. It's great. Cool. And we already made a bit about it today. 